interesting even better than the m and m store <laughs> it was be- it was way- the m and m store is actually kind of crowded for what it is it's overwhelming right it's kind of dumb I I've been to the M M&M and M store once. I had a great time. I didn't buy anything, but I was just like, "Ooh, candy." We've spoken mm. about the M M&M and M store before on this we podcast. Have? It's like a lore on this. It spot. is lore. Whoa. It's a, the M M&M store is lore. <laughs> it's Can you imagine line. like a fan made wiki about this podcast? <laughs> 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 they count how many minutes you're talking about the M M&M and M store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would mean so. Funny. At this minute mark in this episode, you can see it first brought up. <laughs> I always search for us on on Reddit in case people are like doing really thoughtful analysis about us. I, like I don't read the comments, but I do want someone to read my whole life. You know, mm. yeah. I would love I, that. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'll know I've made it when I have a wiki made about me, and I yeah. don't have one yet. Not yet. Not yet. I'm what on you... famous birthdays. I'm on That's famousbirthdays.com. Sick. Wait, I wanted to ask you, what do you call your fan base? The Ooh. Hey Arnold's. That's what. That's what I would call them. <laughs> the football heads. The football. No, heads. no, I don't. I don't have a name for them. I w- if they want to come up with a name for themselves, uh, I, they're more than welcome. I but... think they should. The Hey Arnold. Copyright. Hey Arnold. Credit John Hendrick. <laughs> That's never been copywritten before. I can <laughs> never a trademark. I don't think anyone's ever said that before. What's I don't your, think what's your any... fan base's name? Fucking, I don't have one. The <laughs> the losers probably. Oh, <laughs> no. No. Wait, but seriously though, what do you think? What would what would you choose as you as your fans like group name that's a great question and i don't know because my name is so fucking boring the johns the, see like that's <laughs> yeah baby. that just sounds like you a bunch of toilets you know that means someone a bunch of toilets coming yeah. in well the, the, you said the losers but i don't think that was right maybe well, it's all the toilet the <laughs> i don't know well, i don't bodies. know what this says about people when you said the johns i thought that you meant like those who solicit or those who purchase sex work oh that's oh. a lot about you you were just looking at photos of birds with dicks yeah yeah i was, no, sh- I was showing gabby sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was the craziest reveal during sketch <laughs> rehearsal we we're like going through the sketch and like oh these like drawings are kind of funny and then at the end of it, <laughs> this giant bird dick is hanging out <laughs> so can i just explain to those who are watching and listening so uh, John and I are in a sketch group called 24 Hour Kiss Are we Club. on? Is this it? Or did we just dive into it? Oh yeah, we're recording, dude. <laughs> we never we never tell the guests. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. We do a soft open. Every as soft if to open. say life is a podcast. Life, yeah. it is kind of... Well, wait, we didn't cheers or anything. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. No, we'll, we'll ease into it. We'll ease into it. We'll ease into, into it. it. Okay. No, I want to I, I want to introduce you first, but I'm telling a story, so stop yes. interrupting. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No, so I, I, pitched a, I pitched a sketch in which it's basically like an art professor... Uh, the joke is like it's an art professor who's uh, trying to do a pop quiz of like their students like identifying who did these early works was mm-hmm. it uh, this is renaissance painter or that but they're all just like children's drawings and then he, he's like you know it's a trick I I they're all mine I'm trying to get into the art world I wanted to see if you guys thought they were good mm-hmm. and they're like you should go for it and then he's like as he's trying to close down the presentation it's just a painting of a bird with a proportionally gigantic penis gigantic <laughs> yeah it's and, so big and, and flaccid and yeah. flaccid it's just yeah. hanging on the ground <laughs> that's how he's dragging it on the ground yeah, yeah. it's just dragging and Which then it's weird because yeah. birds can fly yeah <laughs> is the not dick, with that dick that, that, yeah <laughs> it's way with down, that like pendulum hanging between the legs <laughs> no way you, you think that bird do you think bird would ever get a penis reduction Man, has anyone ever gotten a penis reduction? Do you think? No, not definitely not the guy with the biggest dick in the world. Have you seen it? Have you seen I it? I have seen him. I have not. I've not him. seen the dick, but I know Would that guy. Would you be guy. surprised yeah. that I haven't so- sought him out? Well, here's the thing: is I am Wait, actually you're, surprised. What? You're not straight? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? I'm so straight passing. Yeah. I have not sought out the man. Should I look it up right now? It's just yeah. like I think they said it's it's mostly foreskin, so they don't really count it as like the big. Wait, dick. are you talking about a Mexican dude? I think oh, so. I've seen his dick. No, yeah. I've seen. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm talking about. I know about that. I guy. saw a Mexican dude's dick on the subway over here. It was <laughs> we're probably talking about the same person. They're such a renewable resource. <laughs> no, I'm talking about a dude. I think is. I think I know his name. His name is Jonah Falcon. You're talking like you went to college with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go to Northwestern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think he I know. Was that a group, man. <laughs> Wait, you, what? He was on Sit and Spin Theater Board. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. No, he's this dude. I saw him on like a morning show, right? Where he like shows the hosts a picture of his dick on his oh. phone, and they're just like, oh. <laughs> they're they're just astounded. But like they, uh, like he has to get like special pants made or something like that. I don't know if he needs that part. Per I don't se, know. But... I don't know if he if he does that. But Are you can see it like through his pants. And oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, that's that's it's like a third leg. Like it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really intense. Big. 
So, okay, the article I came across is that they're having uh, – this Mexican guy, Roberto, guy. and Jonah Falcon are having a feud because <laughs> – Jonah Falcon is skeptical of Roberto's dick because he's like, like it's all foreskin. So it's all in a right. technicality, but Roberto's is 19 inches and Jonah Falcon's is 13.5 inches. Well, you know what they have to do? They Sword have to fight. jerk each other off <laughs> <laughs> to the death. <laughs> yeah. First, first one to come has a smaller dick. Obviously, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> to the death. Could you imagine jerking someone off to the death? <laughs> oh. That sounds like a game in the fucking movie. Saul. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> That is horrifying. That sounds like the porn parody of Saul. Yeah. <laughs> you guys never read about uh, ancient Greece? That's what they used to do in the gladiator stadiums. Wait, you you know that gladiators are a Roman thing, right? Y yeah. Wait, Romans are, are they Greek? <laughs> <laughs> am I, wait, am I dumb? Like <laughs> no, I'm not. We're both dumb and Lucas is a fucking genius because he went to Northwestern, Northwestern. with Jonah Falcon. I went to community college, so you're killing it, bro. <laughs> yeah, Hunter College, baby. Up top. Hey, yo. Hey. What a banger. I have nothing to add. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, Mr. Private University. No, wait, Rome I, wait. is in Italy. What? Yeah, Rome, yeah, uh, Rome is in Italy. Yeah. Okay. Where's the uh, Coliseum? The Coliseum Italy, is Italy. in Rome. And, and that is in Italy. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm no, you got it. it. I, I, do have a, I do have a fun uh, Greek dick fact. Let's just keep talking about dicks. I love it. A Hit me with it. What is a fun Greek dick? They used bread as dildos. Oh, yeah. like the whole loaf? Yeah. They would yeah, wow. they would use that as dildos. Oh, I've burnt my hands on bread so much I would hate yeah. <laughs> to just blister my foreskin. Well, I assume it wasn't like fresh out of the oven. Well, I mean, if it's not warm, then if any <laughs> it's not warm, it doesn't <laughs> Yeah, is it even bread a bread dick. dildo? Come on now. <laughs> have you even lived? <laughs> I mean, it must have been very I think it's probably stale. Sta yeah, I was going to guess stale, it, yeah. It cannot be like a warm sourdough loaf. In yeah, your that's why they created olive oil. hey -o. Hey -o. Oh, Olive oil man. is lube. Yeah. I think that'd be a good lube. Yeah, I think it probably would you be. You use coconut oil for lube? I've never used coconut oil, no. That's I've, a good one. You can yeah. in a pinch, yeah. In a pinch. <laughs> if you're sunburnt and you also want to have sex, coconut oil is... <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I use, no, I use olive. Uh, no, not olive. I use aloe. aloe. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. I forgot. Extra mixed. virgin. No, I use I use uh, aloe when I have a sunburn. Okay. I, I like nice. aloe. Not as lube. You don't use aloe as lube. No, 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 no. I just use my tears. Hey. hey. You and Gilbert Gottfried. I watched Bumping Mics yesterday. That was a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> David Tell joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Some people, yeah, they like spit and then they rub. You cry and then you rub. Yeah. Well, the rubbing makes me cry. I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. This is so sad. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of sad, welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. Hey. Hey. The saddest podcast that is also 78th most popular comedy podcast in Lithuania. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. Every now and again, we get very <laughs> odd stats and we're like, all right. No, you'd be okay. proud of that. That's kind of sick. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I didn't even know Lithuania existed anymore. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> I thought Stalin got rid of that. <laughs> Come on, get that shit out of here. You just ruined our all of our fans in Lithuania. They all log off at once when they hear this. It's like a mass boycott. I, d I, I just realized I was about to say, like, they would go like, oh, fuck these Americans. But I realized, oh, I don't even know what language they speak. Is Lithuanian a language? I don't know. That's a good question. Jamie, can you pull it up? Yeah, Jamie, pull that up. Oh, see, I, that's so funny because whenever I listen, I'm like, oh, Jamie will be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, they, so they do have a producer. That's good. Yeah, no. Nope. <laughs> it's just all a bit. It's we, all we a bit. We borrow Joe Rogan's producer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Jamie, pull that up. Yeah. DMT. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy, man. I, I don't pull your face off, man. <laughs> I think I, David Dobbins started that bit on our Yeah, yeah. He oh, did. that's fantastic. All right, I'm trying to look up the language. Everything I'm doing is just a poor imitation of David Dobbins and, and his charisma. Everything Do you, I'm doing is an imitation of Joe Rogan. Yeah, it's Not good. getting the vaccine. And it shows. Not getting the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, you just love Jordan Peterson. Just been hanging out with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they speak Lithuanian. Oh, so it is a language. Right. That it's is a language. the language. Okay. It's a, a Baltic mm. language. Yes. But we've so we've welcomed everyone to the podcast. I think it's time we uh, introduce our guest to our audience. Oh, fuck. Dude, it's been like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> They've been getting to know you without knowing your name. You're you're invoking yeah, mystery. The real you. The real. Yeah, I'm going raw. Today. Have you, wait, can I ask, have you ever asked people 
what they think your name is purely just on your vibe and look? Who would ask that? <laughs> that is such a yeah. trap of a no, question. No, just, well, just like, what do I look like? Because I've gotten people uh, say that I look like uh, oh, I thought you were just referencing our sketch that we did. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you guys did a sketch about that? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. That exact line is in there. Yeah, what does my vibe yeah, look like based on my vibe? Yeah. yeah. I was going to be like, Steven, for me, yeah. you know, no. Yeah. I, uh... I don't know. I've never asked that. I see that you have Steven vibes. I can I can get behind that. I was referencing the script. Yeah. Oh. So sorry. Get we are, with this it. is this oh. is a very deep inside sorry, joke. Sorry, you guys between... didn't bring the script on the pod. I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, you're go we're going unscripted. Before here. before we uh, we let this get away from us, give a round of applause for a fantastic comedian, co host of the Shakedown. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a member of my sketch group, Twenty Four Hour Kiss Club. Twenty Four Hour Kiss and Club. It's his sketch group. It's his sketch group. I'm just lucky to be there. No, just... it's it is Sam Schaefer's sketch group. You're also, up top, I want to say this: Sam Schaefer never talked to the guy. I don't know him. Never <laughs> seen him. He mentioned me on his episode. I do not like th that guy. Says a lot of anti-Semitic stuff to me, and I'm distancing myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, I'm not Jewish, and I, you just like, I will do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to clear the air. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I Give love, a round of I applause for your friend and mine, John Hedrick. John oh, thank Hedrick. You. How does it feel to be persecuted for being Jewish by I Sam Schaefer? It feels, I mean, it feels pretty bad, but I feel really funny. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just You feel like you're uh, behind the media? Yeah. I think. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I was about to make a control the weather joke, and I was like, "Yeah, Let me yeah, just yeah, stop. yeah, yeah." You made it cloudy. I can say that. I'm, I'm. We're, we're both Jewish. We make one whole Jew. You've been, me and yeah. Gabby. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was such a funny like stereotype that like Jews control the weather. Where did Insane. that come from? Insane. If we controlled the weather, why would the weather sometimes be bad? Yeah. yeah. Why would climate change be a thing too? Yeah. No. I to make a, it hotter for us. It's too cold. <laughs> I had a driving instructor who said that um, billionaires put chemtrails in the air because um, they didn't want to pay for snowmobiles in the city, so they made it hotter. Um, what? I obviously <laughs> failed my driving test. Because <laughs> you crashed the car trying to kill him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'll, I'll dump this in the fucking East River. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck your ignorance and lies. And they were like, we cannot pass you. <laughs> Wait, when was this? When was your driving test? And it was like three or two years ago or something. Did you pass? Mm. No. Oh. <laughs> I failed Well, gay miserably. people can't drive. That's like a thing. It's like right? a thing. Oh, like yeah. Gay people can't drive. They didn't even let me parallel park. You know what the craziest thing is? They're not even fighting for the right to. <laughs> they, don't get they just don't actually want to. I, yeah. I don't want to drive. Too busy fighting Dave Chappelle. You should be fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you should be fighting for driver's rights. Which is funny because he doesn't give me the vibes of someone who can drive. He Dave Chappelle? No. I feel like he I'm just tired. walks around. <laughs> of all these gays trying to drive. <laughs> He's he's gigantic crazy. too. He's Wait, a big dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, know. he's he's very bulked. He's a very bulky dude. Yeah, but I mean he's like a bitter old man now. He's a Do you guys like Chappelle? <laughs> <laughs> I have mixed feelings. I saw I, I I don't love like what he's standing yeah. for now, but I did see him at Radio City Music Hall a few years back and I was like, you know what? Fuck. Like he's really good he's at really standing good. comedy. Like, when he first came sort of like onto Netflix with like a couple uh, sketches. Oh yeah, you can tighten that sort of that, that little handle right there, and it'll stop like swinging back. I don't know. I'm chilling. Why are you it. making him do more work? Yeah, make Jamie do it. Yeah. <laughs> you just sit there all day and pull things up. <laughs> do I think you would just start. I just. I'm sorry. I look at people. I just expect them to do things for me. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm in a sketch group with you. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've done nothing. Um, if anything, I have done nothing. You like the venue you perform at? <laughs> oh, there, oh, there it is. <laughs> It can go like that. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I will say that they like perform in Lucas's asshole. That's yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's very yeah, spacious. Yeah. It's one fart away from just being blown out. <laughs> we could, we'll be destroyed. What an intrusive thought of like all of you coming out of Lucas's butt at once. Yeah, it's like a like, clown Whoa! car. <laughs> My career. It's like it's <laughs> my credits. I don't have any credits. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what a bummer. <laughs> oh god. So sad. <laughs> no, no, but I did want to say that like when uh Dave Chappelle first started like doing his specials on Netflix, like the first few I was like these are amazing. Yeah. I thought they were so funny, mm -hmm. and then over time I was just like, okay, I don't quite agree with that, but I still think this one is pretty good. And then the yeah. most recent one, I really just thought was lazily done. Yeah, I didn't laugh. It just once. was it it did not yeah. make me laugh. I will say I I did not agree with the idea that it should be taken off Netflix. And I do agree that anyone who criticizes it should see it in its entirety 
That being said, I saw it in its entirety and I didn't think it was good. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a close. Like if you're yelling "bitch" as a punchline, like that's like yeah. an open micer move, and it's yeah. like, bro, you're 55 <laughs> or however the fuck old he I is. I think he's only like 46 or seven or something. I, like that. I mean, that dude. You see how he smokes? That dude's 55. Yeah. He's got the lungs. I mean, he's got the lungs of a fucking 90 year old at this point. He was out of breath after that dude tackled him on stage. Yeah. And he didn't do anything. He just walked 10 steps to go stomp on him and then walked back. And he was like, <laughs> and I was like, you old, bitter man. You old, old man. Yeah. So Closer was like lame. Sticks and stones. I was like, this is, this dude is such a, like, he's just bummed out about yeah. nothing, yeah. too. He's just, it's a bummer. Julia brings yeah. up a good point because yeah. it's like he is just ruining his legacy. Like it's just. It's I know. A, oh, it's just, yeah. it's it's a thing that just makes you sad. Yeah. It's like yeah. I I want him to do well. I want him to yeah. make me laugh because as the yeah. way. But it's just it's sad to see him go down this path. Yeah. yeah. And he's such a he's such a leftist too. Like especially yeah. Yeah, when he, he was is, in yeah. like Ohio and stuff when he was there. He was like, oh, it's just like a diverse community and mm. like we take care of each other and it's like. I don't know if he said socialist vibes. He didn't say socialist vibes. Yeah. But he was saying like it was it was very like like defund the, like the police has been defunded there or something like that. Mm. Like very is that much. Your phone? I don't think so. I turned mine off. I think it's yours. Is it's it the laptop? Could be a laptop. Wait, let me... Someone's popular. Lucas, who else would be getting notifications besides you? It was the, me. I, I knew it. Popular guy. The last person who contacted me was my friend to play virtual battleship with me. That's so. kind of a banger. Uh, well, battleship, battleship is kind of that's like the worst one. You don't play eight ball pool. On eight the ball phone? pool I have played. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then and then what's the other one? Cup pong. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that one is literally just like I, I have no. What's the strategy? I have no idea. I just go. Boop. I literally yeah. I'm just hucking boop. and then sometimes I'll make it. Yeah, mm. exactly. But that's real beer pong and that's mm. life. And that yeah. That's <laughs> life. <laughs> That's life. Sometimes you're just hugging the ball in the cup. Yeah. Can I say one of my favorite things to play is pool, and I played you in pool, and you clowned my ass. Yeah. yeah. I. I bet it was you and Sam Schaefer both against me, and I smoked you guys. Yeah, for sure. I like mean, a salmon. Like. <laughs> like a lox bagel with cream cheese, baby. <laughs> Uh, that sounded a bit and like Sam. Sam was like, hey, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> like a lox <laughs> bagel with cream eat. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Sam didn't like that. No. Sam Sam didn't like that. I, I do. I'm going to clear the air again. I actually love Sam. I It's <laughs> crazy how much of like a crush I have on Sam. Like I yeah. called him the Wait, other talk day. about it. I called him. I'll call him actually pretty regularly Aww. and just be like, oh, I'm so excited to talk to Sam. And then Aww. like he'll pick up. And then neither of us have anything to say. <laughs> so, so I'll just be like, oh, shit, I probably should have planned this out. I thought we were going to have such a fun conversation. But then, I don't know, it usually turns into Sam talking about how he got, like, insulted or whatever. He loves like, getting insulted he did, yeah. on the street. He's so good at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> he's a simp for the insults. It's yeah. true. The day I actually called him on New Year's, I FaceTimed him. And he, like, mm -hmm. had just gotten in the door. And he was like, it has not been four years into the new year and i have already been insulted by <laughs> or four <laughs> hours into the new year and i've already been insulted oh my god that's it's so, when he first told i was like god damn this is awful yeah i know i will say i have a not a similar thing but i realized a sort of consistent thing i've noticed is that i will say things in a group of like friends and then no one oh, will hear this, me oh, oh this yeah no it's not that it's that our friend tina the will hear him at like a freak you know those okay you know those like mosquito sounds that like only they can hear but humans can't hear kind like of dogs thing? oh you mean just like a high frequency no like yeah it, there's like a frequency thing that like scares bugs away yeah oh for okay. some reason i say things and it doesn't register for a lot of people but it always registers for tina tina's the only one that picks up the things i say interesting and then tina just looks around and is like did no one hear what lucas just said and she feels <laughs> gaslit she feels like she's going crazy and lucas will use it to his advantage to say like the worst things that's so funny <laughs> yeah you know no like the weather comment yeah the we <laughs> the <weather laughs> no, I, comment. I clocked it don't worry <laughs> another one Jews control the banks. Like when I mm. heard that, I was like, "That's good." <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be nice if that were true. <laughs> uh, you and you and J.K. Rowling want that, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because she the representation yeah, yeah. of like the the bankers, the goblins, the, oh, the goblins. goblins. Yeah, yeah. they're like, "This is <laughs> this is it was too on the nose." J.K. Yeah, you see a menorah in the background. Yeah. it's not actually just a, a floating candle.
She's crazy, man. I feel yeah. like she comes up a lot on the pod too because like there's just so much to explore. She's just so agreeable. <laughs> she's just so nice and I admire her so much. You know, it's like yeah. you and Sam, like sometimes Such I'll just call boss. her because I have so much to say. <laughs> so much, and then there's not sometimes there's just nothing. Sometimes to say. there's just nothing to say because like we we answer the phone and we're like, "Hello, turf. Hello, fellow <laughs> turf." And then we just sit there we're like, Hey turf babe, how you turf doing? Babe. We we like don't know what we're gonna say to each other. I I she usually tells me about uh, how she got complimented on the street for speaking the truth. Mm. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> All right, this bit has gone too far. <laughs> Cut it out. Do you guys say I'm kidding a lot, or do you guys say I? I've noticed I've been doing this. I say psych lmao. And anytime I deliver a joke in a group chat, oh. <laughs> so people know I'm kidding. I will do that if I'm meeting someone new, right? Because I I I. Uh, they, they don't know your sarcasm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And here's the, I'm not actually. Do you think I'm that sarcastic of a person? I don't think I'm that sarcastic. You You're just pretty earnest. I'm a very earnest person. I Luke feel. Is yeah. pretty earnest, I, I don't think. know yeah. what that word means, but what, <laughs> what is, is, yeah, what is earnest? Like, guy, his like real humble? name is Ernest. Yeah. What is he's, it? He's just like. Uh, he's Ernest he, goes to jail. Ernest goes to to summer camp. This is a this is a series like of films in the nineties. What you get with this with this loafy guy? How tall are you again? I'm like 5'10". I have a really fun uh, Greek dick fact about lobes. <laughs> yeah, tell us the Greek dick fact. Sorry. What is it? Was it Greek people? I'm sorry. I'm already... Why, where did my height come into this? I don't know. You said Lofi, and I was going to try and connect it. Okay, connect and then it. it didn't... I, I want to fuck you like a loaf dildo that the Greeks did or whatever. Was that I what you said? I still don't get where my height comes into it this. Didn't. I, just, I was going to talk about it after the You're the, the perfect dildo height joke. to be fucked by a loaf. Oh, is it because it would perfectly occupy my entire body? Be I guess. I also just wanted to know how tall you were because you're pretty <laughs> You're pretty lanky. Yeah. Have you been lanky your whole life? Oh, yeah, my whole life. There was a period when I was like 11 to 13 where I got like maybe just a little bit sort of like doughier in my mm. look. I looked a little bit more soft. Right. But before then and after then, it was I've been like so thin. I want to see baby photos of you. I can show you. I have baby photos. Oh. <laughs> yeah. They're also just around. I would love it if you were just like a crazy tall baby, like <laughs> like two or three feet tall, <laughs> fresh out of the womb. That would be I so wasn't funny. I wasn't a crazy tall, but I was like I was a very I almost right out. I was like very thin. Really? I had like baby fat, but like pretty soon afterwards, I was always like just very, you know. Yeah. Were you always like as yeah, thin were as you, you a tall are? baby? Uh yeah, I was like six foot two when I was born. <laughs> so crazy. I uh, your mom kept being like, "Oh my god, there's more." Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. No, I've always been kind of like small, but then, really? yeah, I mean, like I didn't go through puberty till I was in like junior year of high school. Whoa, okay, dude. Guess when was the last time you lost your baby tooth? Or when? How old were you when you lost your last baby tooth, <sighs> Lucas? I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe. Ooh, I I really don't know somewhere from like yeah just gave like a like I, a I really don't I don't know interesting was it middle school Mine probably middle around school. then probably middle around yours then. was middle school middle do you remember what grade probably sixth or seventh grade right like pretty like early yeah. into middle school I didn't lose my last tooth until freshman year of high school <laughs> like wow. actually maybe even sophomore year of high school I was losing baby teeth at fucking like homecoming dance. <laughs> <laughs> Offering it as a prize yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, girl like, you were with. <laughs> yeah. It was so I'm such a late, such a late bloomer, and that's why people, the people, the dentists are like, oh, I don't know if you need to get your wisdom teeth taken out. And I was like, oh, that's right, because I was losing baby teeth in the beginning of my adolescence. <laughs> oh my god. I probably don't need my wisdom teeth out either. Oh, Probably. I had my. Have you had your wisdom teeth taken out? I only have two on the top, and so you I, don't have any on the bottom. No, I don't have any on the bottom. Whoa. But they were like, you should get it out. He's not the wise younger yet. the better. Yeah. No, I am just. You're uh, only half wise. Uh, <laughs> oh god. Hey, oh, oh, because I'm Chinese. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going for. <laughs> and then I realized it was because it was half your wisdom teeth. I was like, yeah, that's the yeah. only thing I missed. Where did yeah. my fucking mind go? But you went for a race. I was like, screw it. Shit. I'm going to double down. Yeah, See, this <laughs> is something I could really only say to my friend JK. I can't really say it to you guys. Yeah, yeah. JK. JK's got a great sense of humor about this stuff. <laughs> She's great. I love Her oh. Twitter's awesome. Uh, <laughs> God, fuck her to the moon. She's uh, really, you know, she's on the vulture list of comics that watch. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to do it. JFL and just read yeah, her under tweets. Yeah, she's, she's on JFL New Faces. She's actually in LA for Netflix is a joke festival right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's killing it. 
<laughs> oh my god so baby teeth how long did you believe in the tooth fairy or did you ever um that's a great okay, don't sorry, bring that yeah, yeah, yeah come on that's religion don't, don't what do you think about the tooth fairy who is real yeah <laughs> um it's cool as she's tight bro <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's chill. I mean, dude, she throws so me a five. Yeah. Dude, she's so. Dude, Yo, she, she makes thick me so as fuck. horny. Uh. <laughs> I'm horny as fuck for the tooth fairy. Yo, she got me bricked up. Uh. <laughs> Yo, I'm always asking her for a pencil and glass. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to talk to her. But I'm her, so you know? nervous. I'm yeah. so nervous. I didn't know what to say, so I put my watch in my pocket and I asked her the time. <laughs> have you ever done something like that to flirt with someone? No, I never have. Are you no. good at flirting? You are good at flirting. Luke is a total flirt. Thing. Yes, Luke. Would you agree, Gabby? That yes, Luke is I, I would. Really? I think that you use your. This is going to gas him up too much. So I'm, we have to say something immediately insulting about him after. Oh, I got, I got something in my head. Okay. Oh, okay. You okay. say it after what I say. I do think you use your natural awkwardness in your favor to charm women. Because you are also and an And you ass- groom them and you manipulate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your viewers. I, I think that you are also an active listener, which is rare for a heterosexual man and women mm-hmm. like it. That, okay, that's all, that's not bad. I'll take that. That's yeah, fine. You are that's a okay. fantastic listener. Thank I will you. say that much. One of the nicest things Lucas ever did, I was having like really weird stomach issues the first time we did 24 oh, yeah, Hour Kiss this. Club. And he texted me the next day and he was like, are you feeling any better today? No one else in the group chat did that. Sam Schaefer told me to go bury myself. It was crazy. <laughs> Lucas is the nicest person to to and no one, but like that's the thing is like I wouldn't fucking do that. <laughs> I would maybe if I saw you at a mic, I'd be like, "Did you take some Pepto Bismol, you bitch?" <laughs> like if you, were, yeah. if you were feeling it, but you texted me and it was very yeah. kind and it it was like almost like early in the day too. So I was like, "Oh, this was at like the top of his mind." It was very yeah yeah, very yeah it definitely sweet was yeah. He's a considerate MF. Now say the mean thing. Yeah. Uh, Lucas is so skinny that if a gust of wind were to blow through here, we could fly him like a kite. (laughs) Well, can I tell you, you're actually... (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That's reminiscent of a joke I've actually written. Oh, really? For my stand-up where I said, because I... I'm someone that when I'm stressed or I'm going through a really anxious period, eating, my appetite yeah. goes down. Yeah, I cannot yeah. eat. And so, and I went through a really bad period back in November where I lost a lot of weight. I went down to like 112 pounds. Jesus Christ. And Perfect wrestling weight. No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. Well, I, well, literally I was at two virgins comedy hosted mm-hmm. by Maxim Allen and David Dobbins. And I was so exhausted. And so I just felt like such it. I couldn't even, I couldn't even stay there just to watch comedy. Yeah. I had to go home. Could you because force I just feed felt, yourself at all? Or no? I had to for I had forced myself to eat. It was <sighs> That's crazy. it was pain. It was literally painful, but I need her to to like bring me out of it. But I made a joke where I said that like I went through this period where I uh, was so underweight. I was 112 pounds and I was 5'10". I was like, you could have used me as a sail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. I know you could have used me on a sail on a moderately sized vessel. Yeah, like, <laughs> and I could get you there. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Lucas, no matter what weight you were at, I would use you as a sail. Thank you. Yeah. I love being used. Yeah. You know how some people have a swimmer's body? You have a sail's body. You're a killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, uh. you have a body for moderate water sports. Ooh. I guess sailing isn't really a sport. Mm. Mm. Speaking of water sports, should we do these shots? Oh, oh okay, shit. yeah. Uh, so there's a first for everything, and I've been told I'm the first person to suggest drinking on the podcast. Oh yeah. So, so. I got Gabby and Lucas, the wonderful hosts. Well, this isn't my tequila. This is Lucas's tequila. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I made them Moscow mules. You did, and I'm very excited to have it afterwards. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we we also have. Uh, Oh, dude. I shot I tequila just with a lime. There is, is so some good. precedent for this, Lucas. We have done shots on the pod once before. When we were on Zoom. When we were on Zoom, oh, so it doesn't think, count. Yeah. yeah, Lucas told me that, and I was like, no, no, that, no that's, that's no, 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 no. awful. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Different so, times. Okay. What, what, shall we, what shall we dedicate this towards? Uh, two Nosy Meerkats. To, do, to Two Nosy Meerkats. And 24 Hour Kiss Club. J.K. Rowling. And, to J.K. Rowling. <laughs> no, I, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Toast, not even as a bit. No, okay, okay, okay. To Sam Schaefer. To Sam Schaefer. To Sam Schaefer. Cheers. Ah. Boom. All right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I got to get in my nose. Woo! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I did last night at Margaritaville. Oh, yeah. Mm. All right, I'm going to follow that up with a Moscow mule. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's taste this mule. 
That was not bad tequila. That was okay. That was good tequila. Oh, this yeah. mule is delicious. That was good. Bartender it's, vibes. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just the ginger beer carrying the team. Oh, that's so nice. The ginger beer, real. She is that bitch. She is that bitch. Do you drink it like plain ever? I I have drank it. Ginger. Plain. Be- oh, I love ginger beer on its own. Yeah. Really. My dad told me one of his favorite ever memories was that uh, he was on a, a street fair in Brooklyn mm. and he saw the, these two Jamaican women stirring a giant pot of ginger beer. Wow. And he was like, oh, this is going to be the good is stuff. Is that he, how you make it? It was in a, it was like a brewing in like <laughs> a big pot. Yeah. I don't know how I thought ginger beer was made, but I didn't think like cauldrons were involved. A pe- well, that's what he said it was. And he said it was the most delicious yeah. beverage he ever had in I his bet. life. Wow. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. I've tried to like get into like higher quality ginger, ginger beers, but they're just so, they're too gingery. Really, yeah, I like I, mean, I like extra gingery. I like yeah. the fire. I love it. No soul or anything. Yeah, Get yeah. Because no redheads soul, ginger. don't have soul. Ginger oh. oh, book me. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do that. Book don't. John. He- no, don't book, John, don't book John Hedrick. Don't book John. I take it back. No, 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 I take no, it back. No, do so not book me. You're like no, 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 no. Seriously, don't book me. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't no. book me because I made that joke. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no, please. We have standards. Um. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Can you? I would love to hear what was your first oh, open mic experience like, and where was it? Would you tell us? Uh, it's a great question. It's on YouTube. Oh. I produced Whoa. a sh- I produced a show with my friend Jenny Jenny Mandel. Mm-hmm. I text her every now and then. I hope you're doing well, Jenny. I haven't texted her in a while. Oh. <laughs> um, we were in college, and we didn't get into a sketch group. We didn't get into this sketch group called Sketch Up, and we did the auditions. And I thought we killed. I thought we were really funny, but. We learned later that like they tend to go for like lower classmen so they can stay there for like four years. Mm. And I was like transferring in as a junior and she was a super senior at the time. So she was going to graduate. That's such a weird standard. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we also could have been bad, too. Like, I don't (laughs) I thought I mean, I had such a good time. It was like fine. Yeah. But uh, I was like, I don't really want to do sketch anyways. Like, I want to do stand up. And like Jenny and I like ran into each other at the gym and literally were like saying that sentence to each other over and over. And I was like, all right, well, let's do it. And uh, we started like a stand-up comedy club at University of Maryland, and that f- flopped very quickly because no one wants to do stand-up. Like honestly, <laughs> like when you're in college, like you're already kind of like insecure and like nervous about life. Yes, I god was forbid, way too scared to try stand-up when I was in exactly, college. Exactly. Like yeah. God forbid, going up in front of a bunch of strangers and then being like dick jokes. Like, wait, what yeah. are you gonna talk about too? Like in mm. college, I did it once or twice in college, and I feel like. I had a lot of fun with it, but I was not ready yet to like incorporate it into my life. Right. Mm. It is. It's truly like it's your whole life. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yo, you got to You got to grind away at this. You got to let it consume you. Sad and grizzled. (laughs) You got to give your body, your soul to the world. It's it's truly. I made a deal with the devil. It's funny. We're like, it's so soul sucking. And then we go up and we're like, so sometimes the poo poo's on the tent. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes my bidet doesn't work. Mm. Y'all on Bumble? Just yeah, like- yeah. So dating's weird. It's so just- dating. Um, so me and her tried to go to some mics in D.C. because the University of Maryland is like 30 minutes north of D.C. And we went there and we would just get bumped like motherfuckers. Like all of mm. like their till like 10 30 11 30 at night at like a bar i wasn't even old enough to be there so i had x's on my hands and they wouldn't even put me up i was 20 20 Mm -hmm. yeah i was 20 and like jenny went up and like nobody was even like listening they were just talking at the bar like literally like this far away yeah like just talking at the bar and jenny like walked up and like stood in the middle of like their conversation it was like running like material by them and like they just i don't even know they somehow out did her and like just kept talking <laughs> it was so oh rude God. and after that i didn't even go up because i drove there i was like fuck this i need to go i have class like i have yeah. to go home and so we went back so jenny went up i didn't go up that was supposed to be my first open mic ever and then she was like fuck this like let's produce a show we're gonna pack out the audience and this will be a place for us to work material oh that's dope so nice. we produced a show she did a lot of the grunt work i kind of just got people together and uh we had 120 people in a room 
that was only supposed to seat 60. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whoa. And we had to turn That's away. That's like my high school. Yeah. <laughs> it was built for 2,000, and it had 4,500 kids. Jesus. That's like any New York public high school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's too You're, many people in this There's way city. too many kids. Remember the, like, we don't have enough paper vibes? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, you, New my York? textbooks went back yeah. to the seventies. I saw kids like writing really? their names in textbooks way back. So many wow. decades. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is this why you guys are like not smart? Yeah. No. Words. <laughs> <laughs> I no, remember one detail <laughs> about Greece and Rome, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, the only I'm thing I know. Because I'm gay, John. Obviously, right, right, don't right, erase right. me. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the problematic one. <laughs> Can I get JK's number? All right. No. I'm just yeah. <laughs> Not even as good. Slide in those DMs. <laughs> so wait, so you produced this show, and then yeah. how did it end up going? Like, uh, I mean, it was packed out. We turned away like eighty people too, so it was like a three hundred person turnout. Holy shit! It was it was wild. I mean, that's the thing is like, uh, college wait, students. Do you want me to bring over the, this like little table for you to rest your drink on? Uh, sh- sure. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah, it'll Lucas, probably make things you're so easier. chivalrous. Lucas, the. This is- this, I'm the type of guy that texts someone to make sure they're yeah. they're doing okay the day afterwards. It's called being a caring. It's person. not yeah. that you're. Wait, just, hold on. Let's do it over here so I don't have to move the mic. I feel like so no much. matter what the problem is, the solution is like you'll offer a table. <laughs> <laughs> How's your stomach? Do you need a little green table about it? <laughs> I hear that you have a death in the family. You need a table. You need a table. <laughs> My dad dies. I look in the mirror. I'm like, you need a table. I need a fucking table. <laughs> I get it because I am the kind of person who offers, like, when people are having problems, I do offer a weird solution. Yeah. Mm. Like, my, my friend from grad school was like, I don't know what I'm going to do this summer. I hate unstructured time. Mm. And I was like, table? Do you want a, I was like, do you want a table to sit on? <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, it, okay, sorry. What did you actually I offer? I was like, do you want to sign up with me to, like, occasionally be a, an extra on the people's court? Nice. Which like doesn't feel like a, a solution. Do you get money for that? It's you get money. You, yeah, get, you get paid. You to get do... paid in cash. Well, nice. we have we have a plan. We need to do something like that. We need to go in on a daytime. I mean, I want to go on show. Maury. I want to go on Maury. I want to go on Maury so badly. I, I was an, I was an audience member on Maury. It was the most fun I've was ever. Was it fun? I, Michael I Aber on Doctor Phil. Yes, I've seen the clip. Oh, it's so good. And it's so just funny. him going. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> Before he wore glasses. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Do, Do I like think... Michael Aber? He's fine. Yeah, he's all no, right. <laughs> We're lukewarm on the subject. No, but I love Michael Aber. This is a question. Do you think Maury is handsome? Oh. Think about it. Think I don't about really know answer. what he looks like. Oh, you've seen Maury. You know I would what he recognize looks like. him, but I don't. Yeah. I'll pull up, I'll pull up pull a picture up, of him. Please. Because yeah, I, I was looking at him and I was like, it's interesting. He looks like someone who used to be really handsome, mm. but actually aged pretty okay. I yeah. think he's hot. Okay. I think Maury is, re- is, is, I would, go, I would go as far, maybe it's just the shot. I don't All know. Right, this is him. We are drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we are drunk. We're so. fucked up right now. We're talking this about Maury being hot. That's Maury. Oh, I could, yeah. So yeah, handsome. Yeah, he's definitely, yeah. he's aged well. You can I, yeah, tell totally that he's, that. that he has really good bone structure and that he actually looks like fairly healthy. Yeah. Like he has a good routine. You know who aged well? Yeah. The, the, the kind of punk scumbag kid from Twin Peaks. You know what I'm talking oh. about with the middle part? That dude who has like an affair with a woman who's married, who's the waitress. Yeah. He- yeah. He's do you like mean eight, the dude with high school too? Do you the, mean the dude the with hair who's like this? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah yes. him. I haven't seen him in recent years. He looks good. He was in the reboot. Oh, All good. Those twin of the Twin Peaks, Peaks people look great yeah. now. Wait. All of them except one. One did not age well. Julia Ooh. pointed out to me. I forget what their name was. Oh yeah. shit. Twin Peaks is an amazing I'm gonna, show. I'm gonna do some, some oh, stripping. Are you gonna do a little strip tease? Mm, 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 I'm mm, really. Catch. I have a. Mm. My body's so gigantic. Mm. I have such a hard time being sexy. Whoa! No. <laughs> Whoa. So wait, are you oh, not used no, to your own I'm height and three. limb length? And shit? Oh no, I'm so tall. Wait, how tall are you actually? Are you six <laughs> four? I think so. Or six Hi- three. Height, uh, yeah, height in my profile if it matters. My favorite thing is that Julia was talking to us one day and she was like, "Yeah, John like downplays how tall he is. Like she like she said that." She would ask you, and no, no, you would be talking about something, and your height would come up, and then you would say, "Yeah, you know, I'm six two or whatever." And she's like, "What are you doing? <laughs> You're six four. Just say it. It's Every fine." Every tall guy downplays their height, yeah, because they know on some subtle, sick level that it They're makes them better looking. It. No, yeah. it makes them better looking to downplay oh, yeah. it. Oh, that is true. It is an attractive quality to downplay how tall you are. Is it? It's. Yes. It makes you a little more accessible. <laughs> I'm like a handicapped parking space. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's why people put the like the six three if it matters yeah, <laughs> yeah. do you care about height no, I okay. I care about height, but in the reverse way, other people care about height. I you every, want them shorter. You I want, like want them, them shorter. It, when I when I was when I dated guys or when I hooked up with guys, this is interesting. I kind of no, like <laughs> the. This is like a Chey Diaz set. <laughs> <laughs> I've dated. Clap, in. Boo. clap Boo. if you clap if you had sex with me, but you're shorter than me. Yeah, <laughs> clap if you had sex with me, but you're taller than me. No one applauds. You know, you know, I have the monologue memorized. Oh my god. <laughs> Che cheer if I fucked you. Cheer if you fucked me. Cheer if oh you want God. me to fuck you. Wait, so I don't understand. So was that a legit like stand-up special, or was that that's from a show? No, that's from a show. No, from right? Sex in the City. Chey okay. Diaz is a made-up character. Yes. played oh. by Sarah Ramirez. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Fair question. <laughs> fair Very question. fair question. I thought Che. What is it? Che, che Diaz. Diaz. Che I Diaz. thought that was a real comic. No, it's real. I was real like, I don't time. like that. They're getting all these opportunities. No, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> Non-binary comedian with no punchlines. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm oh. sick of it. But yeah, I care about height in the opposite way. When I would hook up with dudes, I kind of preferred them be shorter. I think the the guy who was tallest who I ever slept with was maybe bad at sex. He was good at sex, but he mm. was five eleven. He was okay. not. I don't think, and you are an exception to this because I find you trustworthy. I, I thought think, you were about to say, I think you're hot as shit. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're a handsome man. You're but very I, handsome. But I do you know, think thank you. that um, super tall people are untrustworthy. Because I'm like, yeah. what are they seeing up there that I yeah. do? There, <laughs> a lot of things. We're seeing a lot of Jews control the weather up here. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you get to a certain height, you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. These chemtrails are crazy. <laughs> well, that's I've why seen too there's much. no snowplows. <laughs> snowplows in New York City. They're controlling the weather. What a crazy jump in logic. Are you wow. kidding me? <laughs> we don't have to have snow plows. Oh my Even God. though I'm a billionaire and it's way more expensive to put chemtrails in the air exactly. than snow plows. A snow plow oh is my. what, like $2,000? That's yeah. pennies to a billionaire. If if like yeah. I were to max out my credit card, like I could buy a snow plow. Yeah, you could buy two of them. You, you could buy yeah. two snow plows. I got a question though. Have you ever dated someone who is taller than you? Or at same no. height? I don't no. think there's like a no. six five woman. Out they're there. out there. No, they're out there, but they're. But you no, haven't met not me. <laughs> 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 they're not near me. Either. I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. I once dated uh, a girl who was just a hair taller than me. We were nice. probably we were really like the same height, but she was like she was very tall. She was just Fun. very tall. That was great. It was cool. Yeah. 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 Can't have sex on a full size mattress. I'll say that. You gotta. <laughs> We, we gotta take this to like a hotel or something. You gotta be yeah. king size. King size, baby. My feet are hanging off. Do your feet hang off of your bed? Um, Lucas isn't that tall. No, uh, no, 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 you're no. Tall, Mine, How I'm, tall are you? You're trying to talk to him like you're of similar tall experience. Here's the thing. I actually <laughs> would like it if you guys could help me measure my height because I've only measured my height because uh, I, I just got a tape measure and I came mm -hmm. in at like 5'10, but I've also been measured at 5'11. I feel like and you're 5'11. Yeah, Sam well, that's Schaefer the thing is that is Sam Schaefer kind of, is keep like bringing him, we just keep bringing Sam Schaefer. Yeah, we keep bringing up Sam Schaefer. Two eight, but he says, and a but he's like, no, Lucas. He's like Lucas. I'm five. You know, he's like Lucas. I'm five ten, and you're like a little bit taller than me. You right. can't be five ten, or else I'm five ten, and then I have to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't say that. No, he doesn't actually say that. But he, but we can all picture Sam saying oh, something no. like that. It's like Aaron used to. Do Hold this on, joke. wait, 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 okay. wait. Hey, Lucas. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. No! You, oh my god! You did it! You did wait, it! Quiet, 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 Lucas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you're five ten, that Don't. means I'm five nine. At which place, I have to kill myself. And then, and then he does the nostril flares. Yeah, <laughs> the nostril flares are so intense. Yeah. Oh my god. He's, and he, I've talked to him about it. He was like, "Yeah, it's just I, I just do that." And I'm like, okay, "Cool." <laughs> yeah. When I was when I was in acting school, there was a girl who like she was like a really good actress, but she would she would flare her nostrils so intensely. I, like I, we were friends, so I used to call her the dragon. And make fun oh of my god. <laughs> 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 oh my her god. love interest is a donkey <laughs> you know there's not enough examples of women being mean to each other in the media because like i i do yeah. feel like i i make fun of my friends the same way like a bro makes fun of his friends right and i think that's, that's okay. good i think that's it's great. fun yeah 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 it's fun uh, women don't have to support each other <laughs> that's what i've been actions. saying for years that's what i've been saying for women years. can support each other in actions not women words. you've yeah. supported each other enough you know it's, enough. it's time to Cut tear each other down you got the right Cut to vote just stop there no yeah. more 
It's Wait, over. The Supreme Court loves you guys. Nothing yeah. has happened it's in the so last week. It's so funny that we're making these jokes as Roe v. Wade is about to get over. This is really bad. <laughs> so fucked up. Drink up, friends. Um, it's really, no, Please it's drink really responsibly. Um, <laughs> please call your I don't always drink, but when I drink, I Roe drink. Roe v. Wade is being <laughs> Oh, my God. That's a great direction to take it. Oh, I was going to make it. That was such a good. <laughs> we were like pitching sketches to each other when we saw it coming oh, out on shit, the news. I, well, Julia works for Planned Parenthood. So oh, she course. knew about it like a couple oh, months yeah. before. Oh, okay. but like, I was like, is that like insider information? Like, can you share that? And she was like, people know. Like people know. Like damn, I can start telling. Like we were telling. For those people. who don't know, Julia Zen is a wonderful comedian who is also John Hedrick's girlfriend. Yes, I feel like I should explain. Like because like we tend to like gloss over stuff as ever as if everyone knows everyone. I know. Yeah. And uh, well, I like the idea of the character that I mean, I'm sure people have listened to the Sam Schaefer episode, but I like the idea that people have invented a character for him in their heads by now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely a done backstory. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Backstory, yeah, their own head cannon. Sam yeah. Shaver is a con artist. Yeah, from yeah. Sam Shaver is really West. anxious, but he's also just like a huge bigot. Like it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what a combo! He runs the mob. <laughs> God. Uh, I've been impression. working on my impression of him. You've it's, been working on impressions of everyone in the conversation. Oh yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Back to being five nine. Aaron, Aaron does that joke that's like I'm five nine, so that you all don't have to be. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, can I tell you, there's a great joke by Fluke Human. Do you know Fluke Human? Have you seen guy. him? Mullet. Yes, Mullet. mullet. Know, yeah, you yeah. got him. Yeah. Want to know something? The first time I ever did open mics in New York, yeah. I was in college. Me and Alex Asifo came up here. Mm-hmm. We were just about to graduate. We stayed here for like a week, and I did Fluke's open mic Whoa. at that bar off of First Avenue and 14th. Mm-hmm. It's like a surf bar. It's like a surf oh, I never went. I never went. like a went. big wave. Yeah, Otto Shrunken Head. That's the one. Yep. It's a weird place. Weird place to do it. It was the best. I had my best set there out of all the open mics that week. <laughs> all right. Because there was like a guy there that was fucking like juiced, like jacked, like MMA, bigger than MMA, like bodybuilder dude. And he was laughing at all the jokes. And then he went yeah. up and bombed his dick off. Oh, was, no. <laughs> but it was one. I mean, it was just one. I think it was his like first time doing. Yeah. So it's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, but Fluke Human has a great joke where he says, uh, I'm five, nine and a half. So I'm as tall as I am short. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He says everyone taller than me is tall and everyone shorter than me is short. Yeah. I am the truth. <laughs> I thought that right was inspired. Man, I thought so that was good. so funny. He's yeah. So good. Shout Wait, out to Fluke Human. What was it like for you when you first moved to New York? Like, what did you think of the city? Yes. Because you've been here like a year. It's change? coming up on a year. Yeah, June yeah, yeah. first I moved That's here. That's awesome, man. It was sick. I uh, have loved being here. I came from the DC comedy scene. That's where like I started out. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I guess I started in college. Oh my god, I don't think I ever finished my story about oh, my yeah, first yeah, yeah. No, set. Finish, finish. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. continue that and then talk about oh, your show. I mean, it, it, it loops away. It loops. It loops in. Good, good, good. Uh, yeah, perfect. Please. Continue. So where where did I leave? So we started our group you and then and show, you produced you a show. Had a bunch of eighty people. Had a bunch of people. Yep. Uh, I guess that sh- I guess that story is over. I went on stage and like that was my first time performing. It was in front of like a hundred and fucking wow, people. and it was really fun. It was a, like a f- it was a fun crowd. I mean, like the set is online. Like it's it's bad. Like it's not good. I'm very like nervous. You can tell I'm like not Aww. comfortable on stage. Oh, I have a. I it's not public on YouTube, but I have recorded my first ever public set as well. Yeah, because I did. Um, we did the same uh, class. It yeah, wasn't yeah. the same at the same time, but we took a class at uh, Caroline's Comedy School, Fun. taught by Linda Smith, who's been on the podcast. Fun. And um, yeah, I was like petrified of trying stand up, but mm-hmm. after like a little time in therapy, I worked up the courage to take a class. Yeah. And then that was like my stepping stone into open mics. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, that was. It, was it like the same thing for you, or had you done stand up before? I, don't know, I did like, stand up in fourth grade, but I'll get to that. That's, I, wait, that's so sick. That is awesome. Um, it was amazing. My set was the stuff of legend at PS Forty One, where knowledge goes to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I legend. I did a joke about PS Two Sixty One. What's good? I did a joke about going to the Hammond orthodontist school. where. <laughs> Wait, what'd you say? Sorry. I said Hammond Middle School. That is <laughs> Hammond <laughs> Middle School. <laughs> was, there's no numbers in Maryland. <laughs> they got, there's enough school. There's like so little schools, actually. I yeah, think, you don't even need you numbers. Don't, we don't need yeah, numbers. You don't need to enumerate them. They value education over there, do yeah, they? Yeah. I'll tell you guys my great joke, but first I want to hear. So how? So your first set, you were nervous, but did you uh, did you get good feedback from the audience? I Yeah, uh, I mean, I got laughs. I mean, the, it's another thing with like college crowds. I, I wanted to say that earlier, like, the show was only five dollars a ticket in college, at least at University of Maryland. 
they love stand up comedy. Like they mm. love, especially if it's like cheap or like free. Right. Like I would bark the day I would run like my open mics on Wednesdays in between classes and hand out sixty flyers. That was sixty people in the room at the open mic. Are you serious? It That's was crazy. sick. They just they love free comedy and the on, the concept of like stand up or of whatever. Course. So my mic was like I don't know like a lot of people would would drive up from like Virginia to like Whoa. come to my mic. Oh wait, that's so close. I just realized it's not that bad. It's like I would say it's like a forty-five minute drive. But if you're driving okay. in rush hour traffic, that's like an hour and a half. Yeah. Still, that's like that's an yeah. effort. People that's, people yeah. would drive down from Baltimore also with traffic. Like but New York is so oversaturated, and everyone's getting hit with everything all the time. It's like refreshing to think about people loving stand up. And yeah. also, well, also traveling that distance because in New York, because of like subway system and like just public yeah. transit, the idea of like. The, like for like here in Brooklyn, the idea of like going to like somewhere in the Bronx is just so far. Yeah, yeah and that's only yeah. four miles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a car We're, with yeah. no traffic, you can get there in like two minutes. Yeah. So Easily. the idea of like going that distance is even more impressive yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was like a lot of the <clears throat> Baltimore comics, like those comics, they really grind because they'll hit a mic in Baltimore. I mean, this was before the pandemic. I don't know how it is now, but they would hit a mic in Baltimore. They would drive and hit my mic in College Park, so it's a 45-minute drive, and then they would drive into Frederick, Maryland, which is another 45-minute drive, like, west into, like, Frederick's kind of like a redneck area, and they would mm. go there, and then they would drive back to Baltimore and make a late-night comedy, or, like, open mic. Wow. It was awesome. very impressive, and I was like, you're doing all that, <laughs> and you're still bad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I, Say their names. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm like, uh, it's, it's so bad. I think that's the bad thing about moving up to New York. It's like, I just... I, I talk so much shit now. Like it's really <laughs> bad. Wow. Like I'm trying to be like a better person. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> just in general. I've but. never heard you say one negative thing about anyone though. That's the thing is like, you'll hear me. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I'll get there. We'll get there. One no, day I, I'll get to the level where I'm privy to that information. Yeah. 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 I well, mean, one is, day, one day. It is one of those weird things in comedy where like, so I feel like, I talk a lot of shit, but not nearly as much shit as everyone else in comedy talks. And then mm. I like go to my grad program and I say one like mean thing about someone else's writing, and they're like, "What are you doing?" Like no one else <laughs> out. Like comedy is a place where like if you just talk a little bit of shit, you can still like lightly be considered a good person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I mean, it's just I don't know. I guess it's a part of the culture. I yeah. like skating too. Is like that. Like there's a lot of like hating and like like mm. shit talk i was getting cyber bullied like last week wait, what I, wait did you did you put out like video of you doing a trick no or, no, no. Or there what was, was this it? one skater i don't know their name but they did this trick and i was like like i i didn't like it personally i thought it was like a very like cringe trick and like we can i don't know if you want to dive into the details of I it i do I, oh i want it what Give is it. a cringe trick in so skating? a mctwist <clears throat> from tony hawk's underground no i mean, but, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean mctwists are, are sick and like there are, are tricks that like how can I, how can I explain this? Like, I'll start with this. I'll say okay. this. Tyshawn Jones is the skater of the year for, I think either the year 2018 or 2019. And he has this amazing quote. He says, you give someone a basketball and a hundred tries to make a three point shot. They'll probably make it right. Yeah. You give someone a skateboard and tell them to do a kickflip and give them 10,000 tries. They'll never land it. Yes. Whoa. Skateboarding is that hard. Like it, it is, is truly yeah. like you're, bending your ankles in a weird way to flip your board in a certain way. And it is one of the most difficult things to do. And there are ways to kind of like get around that. And like, it looks like flashy and cool, but then like people who like have learned to bend their ankles in this way and flip their board a certain way, look at that and be like, you're kind of cheating. Yes. Like you're not really mm. doing like, it's cool. Like it takes some skill. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as skillful as like, using your feet to actually like flip the board and what this guy did on and i can show you the video or whatever Love he's that. he like puts his foot down on the ground and the board like literally like flips like this far away from him and he's over here and then like he just jumps on his board like they reconnect at the landing spot which is like cool that there was like that much distance or whatever between like it doesn't look like he's gonna land it but the thing is is like skaters who have like i'm telling you like have spent like more than 10,000 hours trying to fucking learn how to like flip a board a certain way and catch it a certain way and then lay, like roll away and all this balance. Like it's so much work and effort. Mm. They'll watch that and be like, all right, well like you just kind of like randomly hucked your board and then landed it. Right. It's not impressive, but it, I mean, it is impressive in like a flashy sense, but it's not like tasteful. 
if that makes sense. Mm. Yes. And I, I stated that. Someone asked me, they're like, why is this a cringe trick? And that's what I said. I was like, it's not really tasteful and it doesn't take as much skill mm. per se. Like it's not really like it's it's like as if you watch someone throw a basketball at a bunch of random objects and then it banked into the hoop. Yeah. Right. Like globetrotters are amazing. Like that's awesome showmanship, but I wouldn't necessarily say like they're amazing at bat like they're good basketball players. Is it do you think that the like the Globetrotters are hailed as like good basketball players instead of good show and that's where the, the globetrotters issue is? are specifically showmen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But that's they how do they tricks. That's themselves. what they're wonderful yeah. at. Is that's it? the thing is yeah. like it's yeah. all about flair. It's all about yeah. flash. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is like super pretentious, but like what I like in skateboarding is is like 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 power and like yeah. like pushing yourself. Like you can really tell when skaters are pushing themselves based on like some of the tricks that they do, and like you can see like the anxiety in their faces before they like pop a trick or whatever. And like I love watching that, and it's more relatable too. Mm. And there's some stuff like there are some skaters that are like insanely good. Like they'll jump down like these giant hand like a. Uh, Milton Martinez, he got Skater of the Year 2020, maybe. I can't remember, but, like, the reason why he won is, like, he was just jumping down giant stair sets and, like, uh, like these handrails that were, like, death-defying, like, truly, like, could have died. Mm. And I would watch it, and I would be like, this is cool, but, like, dude, you're just, like, throwing yourself at these things that I'm losing interest. Like, it's not fun to watch. Like, it's it gets boring because I'm mm. just like, oh, cool, you skated another... 40 stair handrail like i'm yeah. not yeah, interested yeah. in that you think i'm ever gonna relate to that i'm never gonna I <laughs> jump down that many well, stairs there's something i want to talk about which is that um i have shown you this one video of i think his name is jason williams aka white chocolate oh yeah mm. he's a basketball player basketball and player, he's like yeah. he's very very famous for doing these insane passes to other players where he's right. just like he's like it looks like he's about to go this but it goes right behind his back nice the ball, he, oh he's not the guy that does the elbow pass right where he i think he's that way yeah. that's, yeah. that's him that, that's yeah. him that was baller and so but, but that's like I good was, at like basketball though yeah. yes but, so i was shown that by another comedian who i went touring with for a little bit where i was opening for him his name is ben brainerd he's a big basketball fan fun and he showed me these this video of jason williams aka white chocolate <laughs> and <laughs> where he's doing these incredible Incredible passes that are so cool to watch mm -hmm. and I was like this guy's amazing and he was like here's the thing those aren't the most impressive passes they're just really flashy and cool yeah. visually interesting okay. they're not the most like challenging athletically or like right. within basketball like there are other people to do more interesting passes and assists right but because of just how it looks that's why he's known this way yeah yeah so and I that's what like, I was yeah. I was trying to say and then, and then well the tweet <laughs> I guess it was kind of mean but I was like, uh-oh, non-skaters have found a cringe trick to make go viral again because the video had like 136,000 likes. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I quote retweeted that, and then a bunch of people were like, you're hating, you're hating so hard, you're hating so hard. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, I've been skating for like 15, 14 years now or mm -hmm. whatever, almost 15. Like, I don't know, dude. It's just like, I, I can't like appreciate tricks like this. It's great. Mm. Like, yeah. it took skill to do, but I'm, j I'm just like, I'm, I, I don't have an inch. I don't appreciate them. I'm sorry. Yeah, it feels like it's the same thing in acting in a way. Because, yeah. mm -hmm. like, there are actors who you see in, like, a workshop setting multiple times. and Like, like me and your like, scene? Yeah, like, <laughs> like you and my scene. Or, like, you know, that you see an actor and they cry on command for the first time. You're like, that's brilliant. Yeah. And then they do it a second time. And you're like, that's really brilliant. Third time, you're like, that's part of their bag of tricks. That's yeah. something they just know how to pull out. Yeah. I'm more impressed by actors who don't know how to do that but somehow like tears well up for them during the scene mm -hmm. you know and uh the other thing i was going to ask you is like what made you initially like fall in love with skating it's a good question i uh i do want to say one more thing sorry back yes, on this please, 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 please but i will answer that question i i wanted to say like there will always be a disconnect between what non-skaters find cool and what skaters find cool about skateboarding Absolutely. and this is just like mm. an example of one of those tricks yeah uh and like there's this one skater, Ronnie Mullen. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he does. Like oh yeah, no, I've I, I I've played as him on my and, PlayStation yeah, Two <laughs> on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. he's really good at like doing these wonky tricks. It's called. It falls under the genre of like freestyle skateboarding, okay. and it looks wild. And there are people that are still good at it and still practice that kind of skateboarding. You just need like an open parking lot, and it like originated in like the the seventies or eighties or whatever. Yeah, before people started jumping down stair sets. Um, and that's cool and it's cool but it just like it it will look cool to like an untrained eye and 
that's where like the disconnect was and i guess i didn't communicate that well on twitter is it that the train die makes you realize how easy it is no the train die will be like it's just like I don't know. It's just kind of like nerdy. <laughs> Freestyle okay. skating is just kind of like Well, that's nerdy. like comedy, right? You see a comedy show for the first time and you're like, well, I don't know how they're doing that. And then you see a comedy show for the, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen 500 or more comedy shows. Yeah. And you're like, this is what they did with that joke. And yeah. that's mm. why the audience is responding to yeah. it. Yeah. It's like yeah. alt comedy. Like you'll, you'll be like, oh, alt comedy is like so, like it's so different and like unique. And then like you're surrounded by it for a long time. And you're like, all right, well, it's. Just it's a bag like of tricks. Weird. Yeah. yeah. You can just... pull out one kind of like turn of phrase or like diving into like a character. Yeah. Or... yeah I yeah. will say though, I think they're because like my granddad is a painter and. Right. Sam was talking. I love Sam. We were <laughs> talking about him. But he brought it up in the last five and he was like, your grandfather is like a very profound painter. It right? was an interesting thing because the shit is around here. Yeah. Um, but the, it was an interesting thing. Like I went over to his apartment where we were going to have a sketch rehearsal, but right. I was there like an hour early. So we just like hung out for a while. And he was like, yeah, I like, I studied your grandfather in college. Really? No, he literally and knew he about, it like that. He yeah. knew about my, he knew about my grand. I was like, that's so cool. And he was like, you know, he's so like deep. And so, because the thing is like, I like, I notice the effort that my granddad puts in all of his paintings. Mm-hmm. But when I see Bob Ross, do something in half an hour yeah and it like he just does like a bunch of like cool tricks to make it look like a really cool trick and all of these things i'm still so impressed by right. it There's i don't i on it i'm it doesn't make me jaded somehow yeah. it doesn't but it's i'm still that's, impressed that's, I think, by the something. difference between like an artistic activity and an athletic activity because athletic activity is like something you do with your body that's like very quick yeah. And mm. yes. you muscle memory train yourself to do it. Something you do artistically is something you think about and formulate for a long time. Mm-hmm. So like in a way it becomes more what Bob Ross is able to do is communicate how to paint to like yeah. people who can't paint. But there's yeah. no way to communicate how to like skate to people who can't skate. True. I know I'll try I tr- I'll try my best. It's hard. It's really hard to communicate. I yeah. tried skateboarding <laughs> for like a little bit when I was like ten years old and I could not figure out how to turn i have a so real stick <laughs> same are... exact thing <laughs> <laughs> i have a dolly i used to move things <laughs> <laughs> um, ever heard of a wheel and some planks yeah i put them together baby <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i would say like i might disagree with you there gabby in that like skating to me is like not athletic it's very like artistic interesting Ooh, yeah it is more is... I, I would argue it's more of like an art form than so that, is. that that kind of ties into how you like fell in love with it right mm. kind of i don't know i don't really <laughs> i know i like dress and like carry myself like this artistic hipster but i'm very like formulaic and like not like like i love doing like multiplication tables okay <laughs> like i'm multiplication sick Multiplication so- is sick, but there's no art in it. <laughs> I'm, so- I'm sorry, but you just reminded me so much of Michael Hirsch, who's another comedian that we know. Oh. Because <laughs> yeah. he like he dresses in like a hoodie and a trucker cap, and he's like, yeah. and he'll get up on stage and he'll be like, you know, I get it. People like me because I dress like I because I, I look well dressed, and I'm like, yeah. no, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> love you, Michael Hirsch. But <laughs> love Michael Hirsch. Um, I don't know. I mean, like I I, I was attracted to skateboarding. In the same way I was attracted to stand up and like mm. wrestling because it was like independent. Mm-hmm. Have you was, wait, have you done wrestling? Yeah, I wrestled in high school. Oh, Whoa! Shit. Yeah, it was really. I was not confident enough. If I was more, if I had the confidence I had now, I think I would be a better wrestler. Because mm. it's that weird thing of like how your mind thinks and it kind yeah. of like something clicks and you're like, yeah. wait, no, I am this person yes. and like I trust myself enough i didn't trust myself in high school at all so i lost a lot of matches but there would be times where like if i wasn't thinking i would have a great mm. match and i would do well and same thing with stand-up if i'm that's, not thinking oh, that's huge getting out of your own way that's get out of thing. your own way i i wanted yeah. to i'm happy we're talking about this now i wanted to bring this up on the podcast i went to hypnotherapy before i moved to oh, new york whoa talk about it i was like if i'm going to do stand-up comedy seriously i need to like make sure my mind is in the right place and okay. alex asifo my roommate phenomenal comedian phenomenal musician um wait he lives i've been at your apartment a couple times i've never seen him there he's yeah he, i mean he's out he's out he's always out and about but okay he's been in london for like the last two weeks so, oh okay, so okay. Out, yeah. Him on. oh yeah he he totally bring, oh he would be a phenomenal guest yeah. uh he's every so time goofy. i see him i think this guy's great he's 
truly great one of my best friends and like truly like a brother to me in stand-up comedy mm. and i wish he would clean up his beard hair when he uses the bathroom <laughs> but <laughs> i'm just Wait, talk i want all the grievances no it's, no, it's literally it's like there's that, yeah. dude there's so much fucking hair in our bathroom oh in God. general and i'm the guy that cleans it. i mean like i'm fine like it's fine i'll be the guy that cleans it we've socialized our food so like my other roommates will cook the food on sunday and then i'll have food for the week and then oh, my wow. duty is like sweep and mop around the apartment sure, and, yeah. clean okay, the okay, apa- okay. and clean the shower, which is like, I think a fair deal. Alex doesn't do anything besides bring like bits, but which is <laughs> fine because he but brings, the bits are important. he brings the bits. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> He's got to do it. I'm just a humble farmer tending to my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what we were talking about with with Alex. We well, you did hypnotherapy. 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 So hypnotherapy. Alex did hypnotherapy because he was like, I have performance anxiety, mm-hmm. and he was like, I don't want performance anxiety. And then he went to hypnotherapy, and then right after he did it, he was like, that anxiety was gone. Whoa. And I was like, word. Like, is it? He was like, I was like, do you now think it actually works? And he was like, it doesn't matter if scientifically it works or not. You just need to believe it works. And I was like, word. So. It was like it was expensive. It was like three hundred fifty dollars for like a session, and like I went in, and like I was just like, if I'm gonna do this, I need to just let go of any. Uh, I don't know about like if grievances is the right word, but like like perceptions of it or like mm. whatever. If I'm like upset about it or whatever, like if I don't, because I'm like I, I studied psychology in college and like hypnotherapy, they're all like, no, no, no this shit's a joke. <laughs> But uh, I was going into it, and I was like, well... Wait, did you ever go into hypnotherapy and be like, I'm such a bad boy for doing this? <laughs> like, I'm so bad. Yeah, it was, it was my kink to yeah. go against the, the psychology field. <laughs> the hypnotherapist is like, I'm okay, making how my can professor we get you to stop so jerking mad. off right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't even want to riff on that. <laughs> we're deeply troubled on this podcast. I know, I know. We were just hanging out. Or just praising J.K. Rowling thirty minutes ago, <laughs> um, and look at where we end. And, I'm and still doing it. And we're still. And <laughs> I stand by it. Uh, no, so I went in, and the lady is like, I, f- I don't even know how to describe it. like a like a very much like a New York like fast paced kind of like older lady. Maybe like okay, okay. I don't know what her ethnicity was, but she reminded me of my godmother a lot. Oh, okay. Or well. Not my godmother, my brother's godmother, um, who just like is from Bensonhurst mm. and oh. like talks with her, like been in Bensonhurst. That's where my first girlfriend is from. Yeah? Yeah, yeah That's yeah. where my mom grew up. So like this oh, is my shit. mom's childhood friend. Yeah. Where did your mom go to high school? I don't know. One New- of the numbers that you fuckers have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of the numbers, yeah. One of them, yeah. Eight, yeah. Six, five. But she was, so she was in Bensonhurst when she was, she was growing up and she left at like 18 or whatever and moved to Maryland. Um, besides the point. But this woman is is very much like like what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Like what do you, what are you into? Mm. Like what what's your lifestyle like? And I was like ah oh, like I want to be a stand up comedian. I want to be really good at it. And I and she was like well uh, why are you here? Like what's what's the issue? And I was like oh I, I get nervous when I'm on stage and I don't like when I'm anxious because that's when I bomb and I'd like want to be very present with the audience when I'm on stage. And she was like all right uh, blah 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 and like she started like ranting and then like we're talking some more and then she was like you know what we're gonna dive right into it i was like what and she was like lean back and like rest and then just like put me under and she was like it was like a light like hypnotherapy and then she brought me out of it i mean it's not it's really it's not as dramatic as like like oh i'm pulling you out of it it's very much like like uh like a guided meditation yes like Mm. if you close your eyes and someone's just telling you what to think about and you're very relaxed yeah but then uh, she was like, all right, we're going to go deeper. And I was like, all right, well, fuck, I don't know what's about to happen now. <laughs> and then uh, she she was just, she was turns down the light. She puts on some music. And she was, and I'm really reclined now. Like, I'm really relaxed. Yeah. And she was like, okay, you're, you're sinking. And you're sinking deeper. This is and get out. Y- it's literally, <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that. She's like, you're going to go deeper. And like, but you're more and more relaxed. With every sentence I say, you're getting more and more relaxed. And then... And then she was like, she was like, imagine you're floating in water in like an ocean and there's nothing around you. And I was like, okay, okay. And she was, she was like, now imagine there's a light shining on you from the sky and it's very warm. Like, do you feel the warm light? And I was like, yeah, I feel the warm light. And then she was like, now I want you to picture one of your goals. And I was like, oh, okay. And she was like, what do you see? And then my goal, and this is like, uh, very vulnerable. I don't. I, I, I try not 
to share this with anyone because I don't okay. want <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to flop. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one of my goals at the time, this was before I moved up to New York and, and like knew the scene, but I was just like, I'm at the comedy cellar. I'm about to walk on stage. Okay. And the whole audience is there to see me do my set. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, my and then my palms started sweating. And I was like, oh, this is this is the palm sweat I get before I go on stage. And she's like, all right, now what do you, you go on stage, like what do you see? And I was like, the lights are bright, but the audience is really friendly. I see the drum set to the left of me. I see the pianist to the left of me. And everyone's like really friendly. And she was like, what happens next? And I was like, I kill it. And uh, she was like, well, there you go. And like, and then she was like, we're gonna create like a, a word association to help you like get back into the state of like focus. And she was like, what is it? And I was like, I got this. And she was like, all right, we'll take a breath. And every time before you go on stage, you can tell yourself this as like a meditative way. You just say, I got this. And she was like, you know what? You do got this. And then she pulls me out. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Awesome. It was really, it was really cool. I mean, it's just like, also, can I say, that's a fun, that's a fantastic goal to have. Yeah. I don't understand yeah. why you would yeah. feel like judged, but that's a beautiful goal. Well, to I don't, have I don't want to follow Louis C.K. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But My we do on this podcast. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's a fantastic, that's a beautiful image in your mind. I don't, was, know why, I don't know why you said that you were afraid of like judging that. That's a fantastic goal. I, I get it because people in comedy are like, oh, like never. There's like this undertone of like never be earnest. Never like say what you really want. Yeah. Well, I'm an earnest person. So that's why <laughs> I think we yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would love to perform at the comedy cellar. No yeah, lie. But it, I would too. Yeah. I don't think anyone would deny that. But yeah, like, no, no. Yeah. Everyone has a lot of like judgment towards them because of how often they put up Louis mm. C.K. I mean, the one time I went fucking Louis C.K. closed out. So. Oh, that's oh yeah. Crazy. yeah. Yeah. It was pretty wild. But it's one of those things like when you're a kid, you dream about it. And that's yeah. like. The really cool thing about hypnotherapy is there's no judgment. I like yeah. I did hypnotherapy too. It's a very nice. similar experience. Like they just it, the hypnosis is they just like keep telling you to like relax and relax and relax yeah. until yeah. you're suddenly in a very like suggestible state. Yeah. I got my hypnotherapy on Groupon. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, I should have done that yeah, for it my. Was pretty, it was good. Oh my god. I think that's the cool thing about hypnotherapy is like, like it's so real. Like it mm. literally feels real. And then once you realize like, oh, I can experience, like the experience feels real. And because you have that in your mind, you're like, oh, it's not that far away. Like it's not a crazy idea right. anymore. Yeah. It's something that can yeah. like actually happen. Yeah. I've never undergone hypno hypnotherapy, but now I really want to try it. You should totally do it. I think everyone that does stand up should do it. Bi I have big uh, performance anxiety. Right. Like yesterday I was, um, I was on a show with Osama Siddiqui. Right. And uh, there was this moment like right before I was going out on stage where I was trying to figure out if I w if I had enough time to run to my bag to get my thermos to have a little sip of water before going on stage. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he said, dude, I could feel the anxiety coming off of you. Yeah, that's and that's how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Uh <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but he was like, he was like, it looked like you looked like a point and click character in a game. Like you were like point and click, and then you go there, point and click, and then you go there. That's what he said. Yeah. My body language is like was that I was so yeah, I was just radiating this anxiety yeah. just because I was trying to figure out do I have time to go back? Yeah. Do I no? Do, and I was that's what. Well, I was that's the doing. thing is like the anxiety I have before sets does not go away, but now I kind of welcome it. Yes, I'm like you have to because oh, it means you yeah. care. Yeah, I'm like oh like all right, adrenaline's yeah. pumping, and then I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you after hypnotherapy. Like as soon as I get on stage, anxiety gone. Like I'm in, yeah. a, I'm like literally like snapped into like a like a zone, and it is fantastic. Last night, Michael Aber on his show Neighborhood Darlings was like, uh, "Jay Jordan's running late. Can you go on stage and do I don't know like five minutes?" And then like the producer Sophie runs up to me and she's like, "John, Jay Jordan's running late. Can you do time?" And then the the booker lady there or like the ticket lady there was like. How much time can you do? And I was like, I don't know, like eight to ten. She was like, All right, I'm gonna light you at six. And then they like threw me on, and then I just did crowd work for ten minutes. That's wow! Awesome. And it was so much fun. That I actually love when it's unplanned because I have because the thing is like when I'm walking into like I'm going to a show where I think uh, I have this like preconceived notion of how I want my set to go. I think about like what bits I want to do in what order, yeah. and I like have this idea of perfection in my mind. Right. And I try but if I'm like if something goes wrong, like when we had our show and we 
wanted Dylan Adler on before us, but we uh-huh. had, to, but he, but he, uh, he had sh- shit come up yeah. and, he, and he came in. And so we, we broke up our set. So we did three sketches, then he performed and right. then we did three more that actually freed me up so much and reduced so much anxiety yeah. for me. Cause the idea I had in my mind was already broken. Yeah. So it, so there was an element of freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was brought in. So I can imagine and then you're loose on stage. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And exactly. then it's all muscle memory at that. I mean, it's just like yeah. I think that's another thing to remember is like we're good at this. Yeah. yeah. If we just let ourselves be good there at it. There is a certain level of like you've done this long enough for like like I remember my first like real bomb was like maybe my like fifth set into like doing yeah. it regularly and it was at Black Cat and it was this moment of like I cannot control this crowd. Mm. and as many bombs as we may have like we'll never have that feeling again yeah Yeah. of like we don't know how to do this i nearly fainted at a black mat uh black cat uh mic (sighs) terrible place to faint yeah could you imagine getting a stretcher in there with all those fucking sofas they're they're like here's a beer let me pour it on your head (laughs) yeah i want this no people beer or a matcha latte whatever (laughs) no i was there for uh, a bucket mic it was the fourth open mic i'd ever been to Mm. It was hot as shit in there too. It was very hot, and I was the last person to go up. Of course, young gun getting bumped. Yeah, (laughs) I, I, it was like five minutes, but like two and a half minutes in, I realized that because I walked up very, very anxious, and my vision started getting tunnely. My (sighs) hearing started to get like really, really fuzzy, and I thought, I'm going to faint if I stay on stage. So I thought. I could try to push through to the it was like two and a half minutes in when I very rapidly in my head thought I can push through to the end of the set, Mm -hmm. in which case I might collapse. I might break this coffee table or something, (sighs) but and or I could say I'm not feeling well. I'm sorry. I just need to sit down. And that's what I chose to do. I sat down and people started offering me water. I was really dehydrated as well. Right. Um, Wait, did you sit down on stage or you just... No, you I sat down in a chair off of stage. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I was about to be like, sitting on the stool, disrespect. No, I'm <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who do you think you are, man? <laughs> but you know what's funny is that um, there was a dude who I met at that mic who was very nice to me. We sort of like became... And he, he wasn't that good. Right. But the funny thing is that I saw him at a mic last year in the summer and right. this was after i after i had achieved some success online and i built a following mm-hmm. but he still treated me as the same person who he helped console and like took under his wing That's so funny. and i was like oh baby cakes this is yeah. oh, no 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 the power no, dynamic is very swing, is very different right now swing your dick around bro. and then he, uh, you showed him your tiktok and he was like what's t- Talk. Yeah, I'm, you de- yeah. Yeah. Well, I only, I only heard of MySpace. Should we go to listeners' missions? I after think it's I a per- pee? You go pee, okay. go piss, girl. I'm sorry, I never peed. It is a podcast anymore, but I have because we drank. Yeah, we Your have been foot drinking. Slammed on the floor when you got off of, <laughs> off of the couch. Well, we've been talking for a while. We've I been feel... talking for a little bit. We've been talking uh, like a, an hour and a quarter. We've been really. Talking. Yep. It's funny because like you guys dive. Like Sam's uh, episode was really deep, and I feel oh, like yeah. we've talked about nothing <laughs> i feel like no i think we have gotten very deep we know we've talked about like your artistic exploits uh namely in skating we've oh, talked about you. like anxiety with hypnotherapy there's a lot yeah. of deep subjects that we've touched upon is there anything yeah. you wanted to touch upon that you didn't that you feel like we haven't yet i don't know i don't know <laughs> no i don't i uh i fear success whoa whoa talk i said that i was talking about it. oh god i say this every time i'm drunk uh, <laughs> no, I said, I'm all, for for what is worth, I'm also quite drunk. As yeah, well. I know these Moscow meals were very sneaky. Oh yeah, they're they're very good. Thank you very they were much. They're so for tasty. I'm so glad. I mean, and I'm also glad that we're not like piss drunk on the on. The, no, 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 no. I'm very much in like a happy talkative space. Yes, yeah, perfect. This Wait, is, so this talk is about perfect. your fear of success. What is I don't that? know if it's a fear of success anymore, but like I had that show that Shakedown produced at Rubelad, mm-hmm. and like a potential manager came. Ooh. And I was like, I want to do well. And then I just had like, I just like wasn't present like on stage. Mm. I ran my set and like it was good. I got laughs. I don't know. Have you ever played Rubalad before? No, I've never been. Also, I love that comics say that when they're like, have you played this venue before? Instead of like, have you, you played performed? this venue? I know they like, they like treat themselves. You played like, the, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, they're like, you're not the strokes. Like, what are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> Um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, but I love it. I think it's. I actually think it's like really cool. Yeah. But uh, so I was doing my set and I just didn't feel like present with the audience. Mm. You know how like when you're when you're in it and you're oh, like, 
like oh like me and the audience are on the same wavelength yeah, yeah. but you like, also feel like you can move the audience wherever you exactly want. you where, feel like they're in the palm of your hand yes, i know exactly what you i mean. didn't have that but that's another thing it was like i was the host so oh, i was yeah, opening yeah. up and like i me and michael were talking about this last night in that like the host is not supposed to be the killer of the yes night. The host is just to crack them open and get the other people to kill. To support the other acts. Yeah, it's truly like a vehicle to get from point A to like point A, point five. (laughs) You're the Uber Uber driver of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, and and I felt weird about it, but like I had a good set. A lot of people came up to me afterwards and were like, oh, good set. And then afterwards, uh, like late at night when I was drunk, I was just like, I feel like I fear success and like what I consider successful because... Mm. I'm afraid of how stressful it's going to be like a oh, writer, yeah. like a writer's job or like going on tour mm. or, or fucking like being on TV or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I want that. Cause it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. But, I definitely, I know exactly what you mean. Right. Like, I'm just like, like, do I want, like, I like the balance that I have now, which is yeah. work nine to five. And then well, also I took off today. I didn't. Oh, could you oh, imagine good. if I was working right now? I was about <laughs> to do that. That's insane. Yeah. You were like, I'm going to bring my laptop. I, I thought about it for a second. I was like, he hasn't, Checked his laptop. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I took off work this morning. I was, okay. I was just like, I gotta. Well, can I tell you that I had a I had a show back in October where I was told industry was going to be in the crowd, which is just like so much pressure. I had, and also I, such a funny and vague prompt. It's yes. so it's so va- and also they weren't there at, ultimately yeah. at the show, but I had a panic attack on stage. Fuck, you both burned and I, it. I literally just pushed through it. Yeah, I literally I just pushed right through my. And you're not panic present. Attack. You're not with the audience. It was off. I was just trying to stay on topic with my material and yeah. just get through like the order that I had lined up. Yeah. And amazingly, like we had Mia Faith Hammond on, and she was watching that show, and she's like, I couldn't notice. And like my, ma- my manager was also there, and she was like, I also couldn't notice. Good. And that was like so good to know. But I also cannot watch the footage yeah. from yeah. that show. You feel bad it just... about it because you're like, that wasn't my. Exactly. That was that wasn't me in, and I think they call it in like sports psychology, like flow. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's weird because do you ever find that like, and then we'll go to the serious submissions. Yeah. I feel like sometimes the flow that you're in on stage doesn't like translate on the video. Sometimes, yeah. I remember uh, at your show I uh, at Sesh. Yes. I felt like I had- You were so good. I had an incredible set and Shatha was like, that was the best I've ever seen you do. But I watched the video, I was like, none of this is clip- clippable because I'm riffing the whole time. Mm. It's yeah. so good though. It is so good though. I will say there was something funny, which was that, because I saw the footage, because I was like sent it and then I sent it to you guys, I think. And that- the camera was just set up and just left. It wasn't, there wasn't someone operating <laughs> yeah. it and it was just set at a certain height. And so like people like you and Espy were people like, you could like barely me. just see the head really? <laughs> because it was like set all higher. That's so funny <laughs> because it's, it's kind of fair because like the two people that run sesh, Jamie Wolf and Lucas Zelnick, they're tall, right? they're, they're very tall, tall yeah. guys. Yeah. And so it's like set very understandably Comedy's at their against height. Short Queens like Espy and I. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people said I looked like Jamie Wolf when I bleached my hair. Really? Wow! Yeah, like two or three comics. It was pretty funny. That's not. That's not a bad. That's not a bad thing to no, get. He's I, a very I, handsome dude. I think, we're I think so. I think we are exciting. We're try. Yeah. Tell I. Uh, I wish I knew him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On like a personal level. He's a cool yeah. dude. He used to come to Anne Hathaway in the old days. Like, yeah. yeah. The, the Anne Hathaway that's where I met him. Fun. Used to be in the freaking uh, pit attic. Yeah. Right. The, 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 it was yeah, like, I know about the pit. Yeah. It was Tiny literally spot. the smallest yeah. space. Well, I never went to the attic, but I went to the venue. The attic is like probably the size of maybe a little smaller than like this living room. Like wow, how many people could you put in there? Like twenty? We would put 13? like twenty. On the list would be like twenty six people, and of we course. would like twenty ish people would be in the room because some people come late or whatever, and people would leave. <sighs> That's but it was wild. like if you were up first at that mic killer you would crush every time yeah. because there were 20 people in a tiny space so yeah. last yeah. like ricocheting yeah. is tiny cupboards like closet room like that now i haven't been there in a little bit the mushroom it can, can like be that. like that yeah. if yeah. if there's a good amount of energy yeah. but so, it's it's hit or miss sometimes yeah. okay yeah. i like it there though but i think it is time that yes we go sorry to i have derailed the conversation i have times. one pulled up right it, yeah i have one pulled up right now okay uh here it is I had an agency worker join the team recently, in parentheses, support worker. She was amazing and got stuck in with the customers and doing a great amount of work when she was agency. But the moment she got hired, she kept asking me to help her do everything, including the most basic of tasks. 
recently i found out she was quitting and instead and instead of dealing with her asking me how to do everything i decided to call in sick with covid for 14 days <laughs> do you think this what? was a more creative way to deal with this Wait. do you th- do you think there was a more creative way to deal with this yeah that is pretty creative i, I think it's know. fine uh, wait. So what? Is, so agency, like a like a contractor, like they're outside hire. I'm not sure. I think it's a. Is it Italian agency? Are they industry? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, are they industry? <laughs> Do they book a cruise? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this person they work at some company, and then a person who worked under them just wasn't very good and was relying right. on them. And they didn't feel like mm. feeling it, so they were like, "I have COVID," but they didn't. Interesting. Uh, um. Well, fucker, you better wear your mask because when you actually get COVID, people are not going to believe Oh, you yeah. know, karma, <laughs> you're going to get that COVID so quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karma's coming. Dude, I will say, like, all of the bad interns you'll ever have are just people who are going through it and need your help. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to just work their way up. Exactly. If it's is it an intern? I don't. Know, or is it like a temp? Oh, maybe that's what agency is. Temp agency. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Oh. Yeah, you really like if you're a temp, you really can't be like messing up like that. You really got to step your game up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a contractor, so that's why I'm like, I'm, like I try to make sure like I'm on. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. All right. Do you want? But I took PTO today. Go for the, <laughs> yeah, go for the next one. Okay. Hello, lukewarm and gammy. Which Fun. are our birth names. Yep. First of all, I just want to say thank you for <laughs> Those great, are our confirmation names. A great podcast. I've been looking for a lighthearted, fun podcast since my old favorite podcast ended. I think there was another favorite <laughs> My old us. favorite podcast ended, uh, Stuff You Should Care About. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and listening to Two Nosy Meerkats during my commute has been one of the highlights of my day. Thank Aw, you. thank you. Fantastic. Anyway, so I was listening to the first episode, and I got excited when I heard you guys talk about Survivor. I want to know what your guys' strategies would be to win Survivor, and I want to share mine. Wow. Mine is simple. I refuse to tell anyone my name, but I'll act like I've already told everyone my name. That way, no one can vote me off. What are they going to do? Ask me my name? Embarrassing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Once I make it to the top, to the jury, I'll tell them that if they vote for me, um, I'll finally tell everyone my name. Then I'll finally give my name at the reunion show and run into the sunset with Jeff Probst and my million dollar check. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, first off, put a character limit on your list of submissions. <laughs> P.S. When I come back for the reunion show, I will He's still going. My name. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I can recycle that strategy. I will say that's genius. That is really... So wait, what that. is the strategy? They are going to Basi- go on the show and lie about their name? No, 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 no. And then not introduce themselves to people so that people will feel awkward asking them then what their name is. then why would they want to work And with then they them. can never eliminate them because they don't know their name. Ooh, but then well they won't work with them isn't it all about like alliances and stuff i think at some point i would just ask point blank what is your name (laughs) i would just do that i'll be like we're we got a task we i need your name yeah yeah Hmm. i do like the idea i think i would make a great sketch of someone be like this is my strategy to win survivor i'm just i'm not gonna tell people my name i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of bad with names and i'm always comfortable asking people what their name is again even if it's been like four times yeah because i've already forgotten their name lucas i don't know yeah (laughs) (laughs) what's your name again Uh, (laughs) i know in my heart it's not a personal thing like i know that i know faces so if I ask someone their name five times, I don't feel like a bad person. I will ask your name 400 times and I'll never feel awkward about it. So that strategy wouldn't work. Yeah. I've right. thought about what my strategy would be on Survivor. Mm. Honestly, I would try and be like a really nice person. And I think I'd make it in fifth. I don't yeah. think I'd win Survivor. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> but can I tell you something a little bit awkward, which is that uh, there's a TikTok creator I know who is mm. a singer whose concert I went to uh, very recently in New York. And um, she posted about it saying, hey, if you, uh, it was like a mutuals only post. And she was like, hey, if any of you want to come see my show, let me know. And I commented. I was like, oh, I'd love to if there are any other like TikTok creators who would love to like get a table. And then there was this dude who was like, oh, yeah, I'd lo- I'm going to I'm going to be there. And then but I never followed him. I just knew that he was another person that followed this person who I knew. Mm-hmm. And so I then saw him at the show. I, after the show, he was like, hey, it's me. And I was like, no. Oh, no. His You're... name's literally on the TikTok profile. No, it wasn't. 
It was not. Oh, he goes by it, like a, it wasn't his username was not his name, but I was his like his name was like dumb bitch twenty eight. <laughs> and the thing is like he was like, Hey Lucas, and I was like, What's your name? Oh, I, no. I felt so bad about it. I felt. I think so it's just kind of an awkward situation. It's not really. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's not something to take like personally. I no, agree. I like. I'm not. I didn't like take it to heart, but I did feel bad in the moment. I was like, this dude. I, it, it's not yeah. a nice thing to undergo yeah. from his point of view. There's I felt someone bad. in the DC comedy scene that I've met four times. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's fine. What's his name? Uh, oh, should I name drop them? Uh, they're good. They they have a CC uh, credit. Nice. All right, credit. sure. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dave. Sh I've met Dave, Dave <laughs> Uh Lafayette Wright. Okay. He was on Heart of the City. A, I forgot the name while Lafayette. Ago. That is he's a... really tall too, and like really funny. Mm. And he's like how tall? Taller than me, like six, oh. six, what? seven. Whoa! I don't know, six, six. Don't tell my girlfriend that. She'll Hot. leave me. <laughs> <laughs> Hot diggity dog. Yeah. Um. All right. I have. Oh, I wanted to say this. Oh yes, Clara Oshansky, top tier writer. Oh, incredible, so incredible. Yeah, I, I don't so know good. why this popped in my head, but I, I wanted to say it. I love their writing. Probably because they were our last guest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I did listen Indeed. to their, their episode. They're amazing at writing. Yeah. On oh, yeah. fire right now. Phenomenal person. And yes. blowing up on TikTok. Very yeah. makes me yes. very happy. At astute, very val and Instagram. Oh yeah, they're yeah. over. Doing great. They're over like 10k right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Rookie awesome. numbers. Rookie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> better than me. I'm only at like 1900. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. All right. I have another one pulled up. Okay. So. Hi, sorry if this is kind of long. So, <sighs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> John is like, I need to leave eventually. <laughs> no, no, no. It's like, I'm, I'm down to hang. I have nothing else to do today. Yeah, that's cool. We can right. make this a three hour episode. I don't we can do it. Fuck well, yes. If we want. All right. So, uh, sorry if this is kind of long. So, I've been having piano lessons for about four or five years now, and I do enjoy it, but recently I've been wondering about taking a break. I'm 15, and over the past three oh years, my, my mental health has gotten really bad, no. and I thought got better again. Uh, I was wrong. The This year, things went downhill, but oh I haven't gosh. talked to anyone for various reasons I won't go into. A lot of things that I used to really enjoy feel like a chore, including piano lessons, but I'm sure everyone would try to persuade me to keep taking them. I'm also horrible at telling people things when it's easier to say nothing. Ugh. What's your advice? Should I take a break or not? Take a break. Do take it. Take a break. Take a break. Of course, take a break. Gather and your just focus health. on your mental health. Get it. Yeah. If you don't have a therapist, get a therapist. Just focus on that alone. And then yeah. once you get in a better space, then start bringing in other stuff in yeah. your life. Also, and I, I think all of us have done this at one point. What do you what do you love? Mm. What do you what is mm. the thing that makes you happy? And what is the thing that you want every day in your life? You don't have to make money off of it. What is just something that you want every day in life other than food, water and air? Like, yeah. <laughs> like what? And, and focus on on that. Like what? truly makes you happy yeah. But yeah otherwise like piano lessons i bet this you think they're asian they might be <laughs> they might be i can say that my mom's chinese and my girlfriend's chinese <laughs> no but i, I feel like the Do piano you think lessons you have they, an issue saying that if your girlfriend wasn't chinese you'd I, be like you need two <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i need i need two uh references uh but no i I like it's like how you need two people to recommend you to get into the <laughs> yeah, cellar. No, literally, no, no, literally. Yeah. I know two Chinese I need two people. letters of recommendation <laughs> yeah. from Could you imagine if that was my my credit? I was like, I know two Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> I know two Chinese people. One of them made me and one of them I have sex yeah. with. So. <laughs> Guess which based on the photos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but I, I feel like, I mean, they're probably not Asian, but that'd they're... be difficult. They're both gorgeous, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> I've never seen your mom, but I bet she's hot. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> she's fine no my mom is my mom's great uh but no I, I i feel like like if there might be some pressure from uh higher ups <laughs> corporate <laughs> the corporate asians yeah um no but i i feel like no. if someone's pushing you to like take like piano lessons or whatever mm. like it's tough it's tough at that age you don't really want to push back you want to listen to your parents exactly and you're 15 you're still figuring out what kind of person you're still you figuring are out exactly. so much i still am figuring it out and i'm 24 and do you guys think you have it figured out no no i do no <laughs> lucas has got it. lucas, has lucas was like I, as soon as i hit 1 million on tiktok i was i was good <laughs> i was like this is what is like, this is what it's matter about. if i figured it out um, <laughs> <laughs> i definitely have like some slight deviations but honestly i've I haven't had big deviations on what like I want to do in life. Right. I kind of always knew I wanted to be in the performing arts and sometimes right. I leaned more into acting and now I'm leaning much more into comedy, but it's been, it's been a, I've sort of had like, but those two are not that different. No, exactly. They're and kinda... I've sort of had like almost like 
bumpers up like in a bowling alley in terms of like where I saw my life going. I always knew kind of in what direction I wanted to go in. And I really haven't deviated that much. And you'll still be going forward even with those bumpers. Yeah, exactly. The ball always ends up at the pins. Yeah, but I haven't had like major thinking like, oh, is this what I really like? When it comes to like those big, like of like comedy, it's like it's it's always been very clear to me. That has always been very clear to me. Following up, you like what you do. Yes. And would you say you're happier because of it? Oh, absolutely. Well, there yeah. you go, listener. Find what makes you happy and what you love. Listener. And do that. Do it. I'll say one more thing about it before we go to our final segment. Yes. I saw an India Ari concert, and she said something amazing where she was like, at some point, it's going to become so painful to do to not do what you mm. are meant to do. Yeah. I like this. That you're just going to do it anyway. Yep. Yeah. Like, the pain of not doing it is going to become worse than the fear of doing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the fear of doing it goes away so quickly. Yeah. So yeah, fast yeah, yeah. the happiness of doing it, you're like, yeah. fuck. What was I even yeah. worried about? But if you're, if you're, I guess going back to the listener, like if you're stressed out and like it's debilitating, take a break. Yeah. I feel like yes. we're in such a like American culture is such a don't take a break, like hustle grind. Yes, it's God. defining oh. you by your work. Yes. Terrifying. Culture, which yeah. is yeah. terrible. We, and like take a break. Like that is so good for you to just like this last week. Like I didn't have any shows really or like booked on anything, and I just I got wings with Lucas and like got tequila drunk last. That was a great, that was a great day, and it was super. And we played Lego Star Wars. Yeah, we we drank tequila, we ate just a fuck ton of wings, and we played Lego Star Wars. It was a beautiful afternoon. And then we saw Sarah Bergmark and uh, Tess Trigay have a great show. Yeah, their show show, Spicy Medley was a great show. Yes, Michael Laver did amazingly. Yes, Michael Laver is a beast. He's a beast. Let it be known. (laughs) <laughs> that is can, that was truly like a dark side of I, I was not expecting I can cut to this see out. that night i can cut this out easily <laughs> <laughs> okay okay all right we're gonna get into our last segment so john i'm sure you've heard this one but Fuck. we like to ask all our guests i knew this was coming and i am unprepared but go ahead <laughs> It'll, it's it's so okay Please how do you worry. think you're perceived by others and then when you answer that we'll tell you how we actually perceive all right you. well actually i am fairly prepared i i've because when i heard you do this with sam i mm. was like shit they're gonna ask me this <laughs> well, we ask everyone. yeah oh, you yeah. ask everyone it would be funny if we asked just you and sam yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah uh it's a great question and i'm glad you brought it up because and this is this is this is dark this is kind of fucked but i think about since senior year of high school i've thought about my funeral a lot mm-hmm. i think about my funeral and i think about who would be there and this is so weird, but I really want my band teacher to be there, <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Dunlap, because I had a very, very close relationship with him when I what was did in you high play? school. I was percussion. Okay. But the thing is, is Dunlap did not come into working at Hammond High School until maybe my junior year, if I'm remembering correctly, maybe halfway through sophomore year. And junior year, I wasn't smart enough to be in Calc. AP so I switched to business calc which was third period and that's the only period they do percussion ensemble so I would have missed percussion ensemble but Mm. Dunlap was cool about it he was like you can do independent study during first period and then go to business calc third period and he made it work for me in that year wow and then senior year I was an independent or what's the a teacher aide or whatever senior year for the last period of the day for Dunlap and I would just like I don't know staple papers for him or whatever Mm. and then just like eat bagels in his office <laughs> it was sweet, sick though. it was very sweet so i had a very close bond with him he wrote me recommendations and references when i was applying to college and i didn't know what i was doing and uh it was around that time like i i i tend to i get depressed sometimes but it, it's not like debilitating like it's not like a severe depression it's more of like symptoms of depression thinking about death and stuff and kind of like ruminating on it but like i'll think about my funeral a lot and i think of like I need to be a good person. So a lot of people are at my funeral, which is like <laughs> fucked. It is a crazy thought. I know that is like a crazy thought, but it's like not. it truly like motivates me to be Being like, positive is a numbers game, <laughs> <laughs> which is like, which is like, why would you quantify your like morality? You know, like that's no, like yeah, messed yeah, up to think about. Whereas like you should be like truly like altruistic and we can dive into the semantics of it all. Like altruism is fake or it's real. Like who knows? But like, I truly think like something that motivates me every day is like 
would this person come to my funeral? Would they be bummed out if I like died tomorrow? And that's mm. like a reason why like I try my best to be very nice to everyone and like fun, but I do a lot of shit talking and it is not good. <laughs> it is a bad thing. and something I'm like trying to like work on and like, it's, it's not a good thing, but there's a lot of shitty people in the comedy scene. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's like bad. But that being said, I feel like how people perceive me is like, I don't know, fun, charming, tall, and like uh i hope people think i'm like fun to be around and like trustworthy i really hope people think i'm trustworthy um but i don't know is it selfish to be like will you come to my funeral was i nice enough mm -hmm. to you i don't think it's selfish at all because no, i think about my funeral all. a lot i also think right. a lot about whether i'm a good person and it like everything you were saying like really resonated with oh me. absolutely the same it was like yeah. a, when we when my girlfriend and i went to like couples therapy it was like something that was spoken about where i was like i want the record to state that i was like this and that and the therapist is like why does the record matter right i was like yeah. mm. you're right it doesn't but it like matters to me and yeah it's one of those weird like very human things that that i think a lot of people have where like everyone wants to be perceived well yeah oh yeah yeah um as I'm, for how i perceive you i mean i remember i feel like one of the first times i saw you was when you came to our mic and you were really drunk talking about the taliban and i whoa i thought please it, say you have no memory of it i like i mean like i don't black out like whenever i drink like i i very rarely but ever I, what out. i'm trying to say is i thought it was hilarious and i was always like i was almost like why is this, oh, is this so Oh, because we were talking about because the Taliban had taken back Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I tied it into that war bit that I have, yeah. where like if the U.S. declares war on a concept, they're going to lose. I was almost like, mm. why is this guy so fucking funny when he was drunk? I was like mad that you were so funny. <laughs> you know? That's I'm really glad you thought I was funny because usually when I'm drunk on stage, it's like it doesn't go that way. Well. It was definitely my first brush you that you were hilarious. And then I think as I like met you gradually, I was like. Oh man, he's definitely way cooler than me and will never talk to me. Uh, that's just, yeah. That's another thing. I feel like a lot of people perceive that, like, I'm like cool, but like, I'm just, I'm not that cool. Like, I'm just a guy, like, <laughs> just, I think like the, hanging out. I the think turning point cool. on that was like, when I met Julia, she's cool too, but she also, like, is like super funny and felt approachable. And then when I yeah. found out you two were dating, I was like, oh, they're probably cut from the same cloth as, like, very, like, funny invested friendly people right and then as i get to know you better like right now i feel like you're very like smart and like i don't know like invested and kind of like into life and as drunk. a concept no sorry androgynous <laughs> yeah no not androgynous i said and drunk and drunk very yeah, yeah, smart yeah. and drunk yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the same time no but thank you thank you that's very it's very sweet yeah i would say that i perceive you as someone who doesn't have any ulterior motives who truly just wants the best for themselves yes, and other people that's true yeah no, I, I really, I really see like that. a purity in you wow thank you i'm yeah. glad that translates well because i really do i want like i see a purity in that you just you want people to have a good time you care about people in your life and it's, it's all just about having a good time baby. very yeah no just you're just an incredibly genuine very talented writer as well like the sketches that you have written i think are outstanding oh thank especially you especially the one that we have coming up for our i know May no show. no spoilers no spoilers <laughs> no, no 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 i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say i appreciate but you it's a humdinger let me say <laughs> but no yeah i just i think you're very very talented i think that you have i i would say a healthy concern for how other people perceive you and in a way that you want other people to be okay it yeah. comes from a very healthy like very you want to nurture other people and you want people to do it's like no i just i i I just have a very positive opinion of you. I'm just like, oh, oh this dude's you. very talented. He's like a very kind person. This is like, it's a good dude. Thank and I just you. want to do well. It's very, I'm going to cry into my Moscow mule, but this is <laughs> fantastic. I mean, it's, I really appreciate that from yes. the two of you. It makes the mule taste better. Yeah. And would you please plug and promote anything you like? Oh, shit. Uh, when, it, when is this going to come out? This you is going to be coming out on Monday. Oh, fun. Okay. Well, okay. So people won't be there Sunday. Sunday is newcomers at bell house which is fun uh carly hugendike is producing it um a couple other friends are on there sabrina Wu, connor janda hell yeah uh talib bab a bunch of really funny comedians they're not gonna see this but i'm on that <laughs> show on sunday and then uh, where's my phone i don't know where may 15th mm -hmm. i am at bowery electric the shakedown is at bowery electric and we have a phenomenal bunch of 
comedians on the show. Let me pull up the flyer. Jay Jordan will be there. Usama Sadiq, Jesse Ballard, Blair Dawson, and Victor Tran will be on the show. Nice. Dope. Incredible. Doors are at 830. Uh, tickets are like 14 bucks. Okay. Ish. Come by. It'll be really fun. It'll be, yeah, doors 830. We'll show start with that at, at 9. It's a Sunday night. I know it's a little late, but come by. It'll be really fun. Uh, May 12th, I'm on Very Big, Very Asian Festival. I'm hosting a show at Broadway a little late at night. It is at 10 p.m. Um, Friday the 13th, Spooky. James and Yvonne show at oh, Easy yes. Lover. That's a really fun one. Right? Are they at Easy Lover? I think they are. Yeah. Oh, those guys are great. So funny. Yvonne's yeah. been sitting on the stool lately, and that's kind of <laughs> sick. Ballsy. Ballsy, but very, very mm. dope. And then Kiss Club. Are you going to plug Kiss Club? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. But, but please go right ahead. I think I have it in my calendar. Spicy Medley, uh, May 11th on a oh, Wednesday. 24-hour yeah. Kiss Club will be performing also at Bowery Electric. Mm. Um, and then we're on the 26th at Friend Island at Fiction Bar, 24-hour Kiss Club. My birthday. Your birthday, really? May 26th. That's so much fun. Are we you... got to go back to Party City for you again. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah. Get you a tiara. Well, I still have, like, the um the pig that's that honks. John, Wait, I don't you know if you know this about me. I'm obsessed with Party City. Oh, hell yeah. I will take any excuse to go to Party City. Our friend Chris Scherr makes fun of me for it. She's like, if Party City burned down every party city in the u.s no one in the world would notice but you yeah yeah you you would oh have a memorial God. you would you also got me like these um like fishnet gloves no but you also got me like this like jewelry to like stick onto my face yeah and i was like i'm nice. not doing party that. city's kind of expensive so like you really yeah. have to determine how much every bit is worth to you yeah i paid like i i told you about this i got a, a doctor costume because me and my ex at the time in college we're supposed to be a doctor and a nurse, mm -hmm. but oh, the doctor yeah. suit was doctor shots. <laughs> so it was like, you had like syringes that I would, I could dump like whiskey shots into people's mouths. With. Oh my God. And I put it on and it fucking ripped. No, like everywhere. So I couldn't return it. It was the cheapest, no. dumbest oh, thing. My God, All of the so shot sorry. syringes thing were terrible. So I hate party city. Oh, I hope it no. burns down. Oh, I hope you, I hope, to memorialize all of the dead party cities, you hang your your pinata at half mast. I don't oh care. My God. It is atrocious. Everybody yeah. hang your pinata. At half -mast. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Wait, so I will. Okay, things I want to plug. Uh, plug, on, plug, plug. On May 11th, I have the Are They You Know, you know Fun. show that I'll be doing with Gabby that Maddie Gross is uh, hosting. Have you That's had on Maddie on the on the pod? We have not yet. They're they're great. They're, they're very great. very good, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they Phenomenal beat writer. Gabby in. Uh, they did. Oh, uh, that was such a fun roast battle. Fun it was battle, so fun yeah. to watch. It was but, great. And then um and then also there's like the May 26th show, uh, 24 Hour Kiss Club. But then May we 28th. also have May 28th. May yes. 28th. No, no, no. But, Lucas, boo. but what is on May 26th though? Because there's another one. May 26th is Friend Island. Kiss oh, Friend Club, Island. Yeah, I yeah. Plugged. But then the uh, 24 Hour Kiss Club show, which is at Asylum on May 28th. Yes. And so come to that as well. That is that's gonna be a big one. Oh yeah. Gotta come to that one. Hell yeah. It's gonna be. Night. It's gonna be a good one. Yeah. Uh, that's where the sketch that I mentioned that John so expertly wrote is gonna be performed. <laughs> okay. There. Thank you. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. All right, uh, Gabby. What about you? I have to pee. So I have badly. to pee so bad. <sighs> um, May 29th is the next Anne Hathaway Presents show. We're gonna have friends of the pod on, including SB Rivadonera, Max yeah. Mallon, nice. Mia Faith Hammond, hot people. Jason hot Choi people. is gonna be on. He's fucking hilarious. Jason, so tall, so Asian. So tall, so, so Asian. Asian. Open so for Ronnie Chang. Very yeah. good. Yeah. I also love his very brick hot. joke. His brick joke. I'm wait, hold on. I know you're trying to plug right now, but Jason Choi's brick joke and the video he posted with it on his Instagram is like top tier. Follow Jason Choi Follow yeah. Jason and also Choi. come see the show. Yes. That's what yes. we're going to say. Yes. We're, Lucas and I are on the same show May 11th, and then I'm on Geneva Rust Ortiz or Ortega. Ortega? Uh, I should know the name of the person who booked me. And uh, Valerie Vernal's show. At Freddy's in Brooklyn on nice. Tuesday, oh, yeah. May 24th. Nice. And then I got a couple of other things that will eventually be happening. But you're going to share it on your socials, aren't you? Yes. Uh, socials. At Hip Soccer Lucas Mom. Lucas is like, I have to pee. Please shut up about your many yeah, compliments. So badly. <laughs> okay. We have been two nosy meerkats. Lucas is going to pee all over you. Thank you, John Hedrick, for being a <laughs> Golden great shower, guest. Trump. Wow, come, thank you. come at us. Yeah. Golden shower. Golden shower thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Thank Lucas, you. Lucas, go piss, girl. I will piss, baby.